This video is brought to you by Nokian Tires, a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made in USA all season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantire.com slash EV. This video is also brought to you by Magna, forward for all. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me at the 2023, is it? Los Angeles Auto Show. Yep. And uh, we always do these full tours of the shows. It's actually the great opportunity for us to see what's happening in the entire automotive landscape. On this particular channel, we typically discuss EVs, plug-in hybrids, future automotive technology, but it's great to see what every manufacturer is doing with their entire lineup. So in this video, that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take you on a full tour of the Los Angeles International Auto Show. I think it's actually called like Automobility or something like that, Automobility LA. It has two names. Those are the two names. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. great. Well, there we go. And uh, Jordan's behind the camera. We're just gonna go and talk about cars and nerd out. These are usually long videos of us just geeking out about everything on display. At heart, we're all car enthusiasts at Out of Spec, so it doesn't really matter what it's powered by. We love things that move. So let's go. You'll get my impressions of everything here at the show. And uh, one take, we're hitting the LA Auto Show. Actually, two takes, because there's two halls. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to show you everything here. Jordan, starting off strong with the Fast and Furious collection over here, Paul Walker's Supra, whole bunch of other crazy things. My what? favorite section. We're done. Okay. We're going. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen the show. <laughs> um, you know, we. I really want to make this video about the new cars on display, the new technologies on display. I love some of the existing things, some of the car culture that they're trying to bring into this show, but ultimately, you know, new car tech, that's what we like on this channel is to know what the auto industry is doing, what the newest stuff are. And we're going to see some cool things today, such as this pebble rain, or it's sort of like a battery pack inside a trailer. It can like maneuver itself around. It's similar to Lightship, but it's smaller. And um, yeah, it's still pretty early days for Pebble. They're spending a lot of money in marketing right now. A lot of people know them. I'm really curious to see how this one turns out or really any of these EV lifestyle campers. What's, what's your impression of that? I really like it. I think it makes sense for home storage and everything else because a lot of times those campers just sit at home and don't, until you use them, they're just like sitting there. So you may as well put them to use. Sure, um, yeah. So it makes sense as a home storage solution. I think this one looks good. I actually like it a bit more than Lightship just in this early stage. But again, that's comparing Basically, it's comparing two concept cars, so it's like... <laughs> it's not, not worth getting too excited about those yet. Not worth too excited to get about this either. <laughs> You're about to say that. <laughs> the same thing. What the heck is this thing? It so, looks terrible. Kyle, I said I wanted a Cybertruck, and you are like, we have Cybertruck at home. And then this is what you sent me. <laughs> it's awful. I'm sorry. So this is called AI Tech X. Tech X? It's, it's a horror, uh, really weird name. And this, this, this is the Radio Shack special of the Cybertruck. I mean, I mean, we typically cover series production models on this channel, of course, so it's not worth spending too much time on this particular model, but I would like just to peek inside to see what's going on. It's got like an old GM steering wheel and starter switch. I don't know what the plan is. That's an It Android says, please leave the doors tablet. open and please don't sit inside the car. Okay. Thank you. So there's kind of an Android tablet, some interesting pedal situation down there. I mean, this is really the <laughs> lamest thing I've ever seen. Can we go see actual cars? I don't even want to talk about this. Everyone's going to say this is like Cybertruck build quality, but this is this is far. I mean, somehow they managed to make it even worse than Tesla. <laughs> don't know how that's possible, but we're, we're moving on. Uh, EV Gallery is here. We, of course, on this channel cover a mixture of the new automotive car market, testing new cars, some used cars, especially when we do our used EV series and things like that. But also charging is such a huge component of the stories that we do here. And EV Go is on display with a NAX cable, actually. So they have the Ari on display. We know EV Go and Nissan has had a partnership for a while. I also have to plug our Out of Spec podcast uh, channel. Francie, who hosts the podcast, just did a whole deep dive interview with the folks at EVGO, and this one's in there pretty tight. But this is the NAX connector uh, from EVGO. This is like early, early prototype, so basically not totally ready yet. It has the guide pins in there, so it's an interesting implementation as newer Tesla implementation of NAX doesn't have the guide pins. It's not needed or it's not against spec. I guess it's optional. Um, pretty 
you know, interesting cable. This one feels like an air-cooled cable, if you were to ask me, and it seems to be rated 105 degrees Celsius. This is a Sam Woo. Nice. Sounds good. Uh, but <laughs> so this maybe is not final production. But. This is not the final spec. <laughs> All EVGO wanted to show with this was that they are supporting NACs. They're ready to include this connector on their chargers. This is not what it's going to look like. And this is not the final implementation of cable management. It, it still needs a little bit of fine tuning before it goes in, but I just love to see EVGO supporting the better connector, the connector we're all moving to in the future, of course. So um, yeah, props to them for doing that. Of course, the Aria is plugged into the CCS connector right now. Uh, however, uh, C the CCS on the Aria will switch to NACs, just like most cars, and uh, you'll get an adapter. Let's move on. Everyone knows this stuff. Let's go see some new cars. Yeah, so an interesting thing about this show is it's always kind of changing, but this seems to always be EVGO's spot right here. Yeah, EVGO's <laughs> always here at the LA show. If you look to your left, you'll see a Kia EV9. That's the Times Square 2024 official partner one. Uh, nice. There's a bunch of Kia EV9s all in the same blue spec. It's a good um, color. Driving around in here. So it seems like they got their first batch of pre-series vehicles. Um, we're actually going to be driving it in California in just a couple weeks. So I'm very much looking forward to that one. Finally, I get behind the wheel of this one. Should be a great road tripper. Over there is actually Kevin Hart's car collection. We can't show you because they're playing way too much music that would destroy our copyright. But some um, pretty spicy cars in there. Yeah, just Google Kevin Hart's cars and you'll see exactly what we saw. And you walk into this hall and you're greeted with one of the best electric cars on sale. Kia EV6 GT. 576 horsepower, 77.4 like kilowatt hour battery pack. I'm just trying to remember what it does. Limited slip dip in the rear, big brakes, full ESP off. I have a great Canyon. I mean, I don't know if the video is great, but I had a great time making it. <laughs> Canyon driving review of this particular one. Awesome thermal management. I did a Nürburgring run uh, in these. No, not Nürburgring. I was on the Autobahn doing top speed runs, yep. uh, testing the, you know, maxing out the thermal systems. And it would just sit at 160 miles an hour. Crazy car. This one actually has a trailer hitch on it too, which is kind of cool. I noticed as it was going around. So just come join me over here this way truly one of the best evs on the market and i think they like expected maybe more interest than there is i heard you can get them at dealers at pretty good prices interesting yeah i think yeah. they built a lot of them they're not like special or anything and we'll see the ionic 5 in here in a little bit but it's interesting that this has like the full like glass retractable sunroof thing whereas the ionic 5 ends like no weight reduction here's the uh the little accessory tow hitch nice i mean i've never seen one with that i don't know if that's <laughs> what's going on there but uh, we're also greeted of course electric cars are kind of our thing we'll get back to kia what do you say jordan mm -hmm. but let's um let's do lucid then ford and we'll end in kia on this, this hall this is the west this hall. hall and okay. um yeah this is kind of the halo of this hall i'm guessing this is the star of the show the lucid gravity of course was unveiled this week we have a whole video on that uh, from the media day from the la auto show yeah we are here on the public day where it's just everything's happening everywhere people are checking these cars out which is cool there's a lot of interest in lucid and it's a lot of people's first interaction with the brand yeah because they don't have that many showrooms and it's still early days for lucid we have to remember this car only launched two years ago something yeah. like that and they have all three all four versions of the air on display they have the touring this one right here with sort of the darker trim package i think it looks amazing they have uh, the pure without the glass roof rear wheel drive one i think you can also do a pure all-wheel drive then they have a grand touring which is the long range one and then there's a sapphire all the way in the back we got to show everyone the sapphire yeah, because it looks so good i'm just so excited about that one so lucid of course is known for in my impression of course pushing the powertrain technology beyond what any automaker has done miniaturizing the components super high voltage high efficiency wherever possible, and really focused on the things that Jordan, you and I care about in a car, which is great handling dynamics, great thermal longevity, great performance. And uh, the Air is one of the best driving EVs on the market. The car still did have some like software glitches and it doesn't interface super great with the public charging networks. But if you charge at home most of the time, which most Air owners do, you get, you know, 450 miles of real world usable range. Um, you know, the car's rated at 516 EPA. So that's like, we would get, if it was a 450 mile drive, I would do it on one charge in our Lucid Air that, oh, yeah. that my dad had. And um, they're just, they're just awesome. They're the range kings. Great use of storage. Uh, but yeah, the software was a bit of a issue in some cases. And I think the gravity has maybe fixed that. We'll see. Yeah, the gravity is much better. This is the one I want. Oh, the spoiler and everything. 250 grand. <laughs> 
Lucid Sapphire, carbon ceramics, some slight chassis changes, but really not much. I mean, it's the same geometry, stiffer bushings here or there, things like that. Tri motor in this one, 1,234 horsepower. Although I think it's more, they just say one, two, three, four, because it's funny. <laughs> it's like they have so much <laughs> they more can power. Count. Cool, okay. <laughs> we were just driving the, we just drove the new e Tron S. Right, the Q8, SQ8, SQ8 e-tron. Their name's annoying. Yeah, <laughs> and and it's they're launching a brand new product for one hundred and three thousand dollars with four hundred and ninety six horsepower and two hundred and eighteen miles of EPA range. Yeah. on the big wheels. Okay, this thing right here costs eighty grand. Okay, they'll have at least optional versions that can do four hundred and forty miles plus on range, eight hundred plus horsepower. Crazy, and and even if those are 120 grand, it does, like you know, we don't know what the pricing structure is going to be for Gravity. But I'm just blown away by the perceived value initially. We'll have to see what the standard car gets. I think Johnny Lieberman tweeted out that there will be a rear-wheel drive variant as the base spec, so we'll have to take a look at that. But we have a full tour of these. I don't need to spend too much time on Gravity. The video is like 40 minutes long. It's already live. We go into the software and um, just blown away. Really love it. Yeah. Big fan. I think it'll do well. I mean, I hope so. A lot's riding on that car for the brand, so. But yeah. people seem to like SUVs, especially in our market. I always say I'm not a great company analyst, but I think Lucid needed a new breadth of product. And I don't helps. think the issue was manufacturing. It seemed like the issues were as sales or sales logistics or something on the other side. And so having another product that's more desirable, that really is class leading in terms of space efficiency and driving efficiency, 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour in that one driving. I, I think it's gonna tick a lot of boxes for a lot of people. And yep. that's gonna be a serious contender for Volvo EX90, Rivian R1S, BMW iX, even, that, even though that one's not a third row, but these type of vehicles for sure. I don't know what's going on over so here. So they're printing uh, Kia and sound bites on bags, I think, like totes. <laughs> So you can get in line for that. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, Ford went full set. This is the huge Ford booth, and this was the front of it. It goes back a ways. Before we go into Ford, I just want to go to the North American Car, Truck, and Utility Vehicle of the Year. Ooh, that's a long that's one. That's a name. That's a name. And what a... Next I'm to not Ford, really sure why they have a booth here. Next I'm to not, Ford, this doesn't even look like a booth. This looks like a parking lot. Yeah, okay. I'm not, <laughs> let's just be clear. We're not against Nactoy. No. But this just seems silly. So anyway, they're just, this is like where journalists present what cars that they like collectively. I don't know, because I guess I disagree with them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's why we all have different outlets and different opinions. Uh, the cars of note here are, you have the new Colorado. This is the Z71 trim. This is the new small pickup truck from Chevy. We actually have had these on test. And we just did the, um, I forget what the spicy one is, ZR2. Something like, I, I get Gosh, lost in all their trims. I just, I just did a thing on it. I can't remember what it's called. doesn't matter. Um, here's the GV70 electrified. I think it's dumb that it's called electrified when it's actually fully electric. Because normally electrified is like when brands put on their hybrids. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's just the electric GV70. This is a car no one knows about, Jordan, and it actually looks, rocks. It looks just like the gas one, and it's so good. It's unbelievable. Alyssa and I reviewed this car. We drove around. Uh, Colorado in this thing. It has huge power, amazing charging. It's the EV6 Ionic 5 battery, so 77.4 kilowatt hours, charges at 240 kilowatts, sits there all the way, you know, 18 minute, 10 to 80 charging time. It's pretty low on range because again, only 77 kilowatt hour battery pack for a relatively bulky SUV that was not designed as an EV from the ground up, but uh, great seats, great noise performance, and I really think like these are kind of a, a secret uh, player here. Yep, I think so too. This I'm excited for. Everyone wants this. <laughs> <laughs> this has really been a hit for Kia and they haven't even gone on sale yet. Maybe they did just go on sale. I heard there was a dealer in Texas that got theirs for delivery and uh, they were charging over sticker, of course. Which is cool, because we did a tour of this show two years ago, and it was like the concept car on stage. You couldn't even walk up to it. And That's now right. it's here, and it looks almost the same. Uh, they nailed it. There's yeah. no way around it. <laughs> it's The big thing is it's quite expensive, more expensive than we hoped it would be. Um, but I just love the EV9. I think uh, we're going to drive it, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, um, very soon. And, you know, the power figures seem low, but it's just an electric family hauler. Styling looks great. Optional all-wheel drive. That's the move. And I think they, we, they've announced they're going to make a spicy GT version. They should. Not just GT line. 
This is also an electric vehicle. So many EVs over here at the NAC toy Makes situation. Sense. No Teslas, by the way. <laughs> Model 3 Highland would have been great, but I guess it's not launched in our market yet. Um, this thing is huge. I have a full review of this. This is the Silverado EV work truck, 240 kilowatt hour battery pack. And this thing, uh, usable is maybe 212, 215, somewhere that around like there. Double the gravity. <laughs> it's like double the gravity. It's crazy. Uh, it's fast. It drives great. It's comfortable. Uh, really loved everything about it. And, um, you know, the, the sad part is they're just not going to build enough of them. The work truck are for fleet customers only, so you can't actually buy this unless you have a fleet account with GM. And it sounds like the series production on the pedestrian models are some time away. Mm. Um, but I just love Silverado EV. I'm sure we'll see some more later on in this video at the Chevy booth, but cool to see the work truck. Um, again, just look up out of spec Silverado EV work truck. I have a first drive review of this one up there. Another fantastic electric vehicle made it to the uh, NAC toy situation. This is the Hyundai Ioniq 6. This one being the top spec. You can tell it's the top spec because of the glass roof. Um, kind of don't like the way they package this car for the US. I mean, it's a fantastic car, but I just have a niggle with their options thing. Uh, you only get the huge range on the aero wheels and you can only get the aero wheels on the base car. Uh, and I think it should have been an optional wheel choice because the only reason to get this over the Ionic 5, in my opinion, is for range and efficiency. Because the Ionic 5 looks better, it's more practical, it's the same drivetrain, similar chassis. So why would you get the 6, yep. which up here looks great, but I'm not, I'm just not- The back never... end is controversial. The back seats aren't even that great. So yeah, it's just I, like, yeah. the middle and forward, awesome. <laughs> the back seat legroom is incredible. Yeah. The yeah. back seat headroom, headroom is where it's, terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just not, the, of, whatever's going on back here just doesn't happening. work for me. We did see a blacked out one in traffic earlier today, and I was like, oh, that kind of looks cool. It helps, yeah. It's unique. So I, I guess I'm, I'm happy they're on the roads. I get excited when I see them. I go, oh, an Ionic 6, but Ionic 5 is still my choice. So those are just a sprinkling of cars. We haven't mentioned the new Prius. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. And that's the only, I guess, electrified one that's not fully electric over there, but it looks really good. Well, oh. the collar, oh, yeah, okay, and the Accord, <laughs> but... Yeah, so Accord, Prius, Colorado, new Prius. We have videos on that one yep. uh, on the guide channel. Yeah. Okay, I haven't driven it yet. You had the plug-in. Oh, it's so great, yeah. 86 miles an hour and all electric. Really? Yep. And can you lock it in electric mode where yep. it won't kick on the combustion engine? Yep. Unless you go by 86, then it'll kick Then it'll go, oh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's it's amazing. Great. Yeah, you can so, floor it in electric. It's, really? Yeah. And is it fast? Uh, it's okay. <laughs> but enough to like get to work. Enough to get to work. Oh yeah, easily. Oh. I drove from my house to the airport in electric. Oh, that's amazing. And that's on the toll long, road. Yeah, 40 plus miles at like 80 miles an hour. So. Okay, well, we're gonna get into some trucks. Here's the now. blue elephant in the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you got a upfitted uh, transit over here with by Van Do It, and they are a uh, you know, pretty popular van upfitter that does a whole bunch of uh, you know, conversions for overlanding and van life. We got the new Super Duty right here. This is just an F-250. This one's specced with a 6.7 liter Power Stroke V8. Nice. I wish we did. I love diesel trucks. I know our <laughs> audience is gonna hate me for saying that, but you know what? For my use case, for a lot of people's use case, I tow with my Rivian because I'm a YouTuber and I can make videos about towing with an electric truck. But if I actually needed to tow stuff, I would, not to get use, somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, I would not use an electric <laughs> truck. I, I really like the idea of that Ram Charger yeah. uh, range extended EV. It's too bad they're not here. Yeah, I would, love, would have loved to check that one out. Hopefully we will have the opportunity soon. Just a normal, uh, you know, brand new sort of mid-cycle refresh F-150. Right here, you have the F-150 Lightning, which has not received a refresh for 23, although I have a suspicion we're gonna see some nice upgrades for 24. Yep. I don't know if that's true or not, but I just like have had so many indications from different people and different conversations that model year 24, we see them out there testing again, um, you know, doing hot weather, cold weather testing. I think we're gonna see a technical update to this with maybe bigger battery, more efficient motors, better charging would be my hope. I'm not sure, but I sure hope so. And we have the new Ranger, which looks great. Very similar to the Euro Ranger, which we never got in the US yep. until maybe just now. And uh, yeah, who, who doesn't love a Ranger? I just wish this was electric. I ABF wish the Maverick. Yeah. yeah, I wish the Maverick was electric. Oh, the they, Tremor looks good. Yeah, th we've had the Maverick Tremor on test. And um, yeah, th these trucks are great. If you get the hybrid one, you get huge efficiency. You just can't buy them. My friend Jessica, who's a journalist for Motor Week, yep. um, has waited like over a year for her Maverick. <laughs> and they, it's just on the way to its dealer. She still hasn't gotten it. So now we enter inside of Ford 
I think Ford is popular. I mean, just the sheer amount of people over here. People love Ford. There's no way around it. And this is what I love right here. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I've come to it. This is the $300,000 Mustang GTD. Full, basically, homologation race car. They the solved street. the problem who walk, the people who walked into the dealer and they're like, I have 300 grand, I want a Mustang, what should I buy? Yes, and like, here's the trim for you. <laughs> yeah, right here, hell yeah. And just crazy, magnesium wheels, fully adjustable suspension. Great you know, every, fitment. Everything that they could have done on this, it's absolutely dialed up to 11. And you know what? When Ford goes crazy, they do some pretty incredible things. We all know the GT350R, one of my favorite vehicles of all time, like 8,600 RPM of that voodoo flat plane crank V8, just crazy. This is gonna be insane. It's gonna sound crazy. Uh, I believe also a flat plane in this one as well. And um, yeah, just, just wanna drive it. <laughs> all right, I mean, on this channel, you guys don't care. If you like combustion stuff and performance oriented vehicles, I have my own personal channel where I cover cars that aren't always electric and it's just called Kyle Connor. Yeah, look forward to the GTD review on Kyle Connor. Uh, yeah, I really hope so. Anyways, here's great. all the other Mustangs. Convertible right there, and, Mobile uh, 5 over there. Raptor R. Raptor R. Spicy section over here. Yeah, supercharged V8 pickup truck, love that. Uh, I mean, what I really want to see is an F-150 Lightning Raptor. Oh. Like dial up the power, same suspension as that truck, full send would be pretty epic. We have the Ranger Raptor here, which is great. We just have a F-150. It's not, I mean, just a normal, uh, tre I mean, tremor pack sort of light opera. These are very popular in Colorado to see the tremors. And then we have, if we come just over this away, the Mustang Mach-E GT, which is getting a presentation. And uh, new, like the color on this one? Uh, it's okay. Really? I love it. Yeah, it's, it's nice. I, I like I like the cyber orange. I like that sign. Home is where the charge is. <laughs> That's how I feel. Yep. That's a great sign. <laughs> and they're showcasing some of their Ford Pro. They have their 80 amp charger or EVSE for the nerds, uh, a 48 amp, and then also their, I believe, 32 amp mobile connector, which is a split voltage 120, 240. A lot of options for charging. A lot of options. Good stuff. Let's continue. They're ripping, doing skids in the uh, <laughs> Raptor over here. <laughs> yeah, I think they have the diffs locked. Yeah. It did, didn't unlock. Because yeah. <laughs> they weren't going that fast. They have this huge line for people to do ride-alongs in the Broncos. They have a huge course for Broncos. We'll see more of it over here in a minute. Yeah, so I'm actually really well, liking just, the model here. They always here. have a huge huge booth. I don't want to spend too much time on it because I should probably do a whole video on the new F-150, but I like the updated model year 24 styling of F-150. So we have the new Mustang redesigned, of course, very recently. They've already made their way into the rental fleets. We've seen people ripping around LA and convertible <laughs> specs just like this. This one's actually spec'd as a manual, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. More manual transmissions. I mean, if it's not electric, then make it a manual. That's yeah. just my personal belief. And then we get some cool stuff back to the EV sector, the Mustang Mach-E Rally. How sick is this, Jordan? Everyone loves it. You know, it's more of a styling package. It's more of a lifestyle situation. It's not like it's actually built to be, you know, the next WRC car that you can drive on the street, but they went with a Michelin Cross Climate 2 tire, which is a pretty good all-weather tire. It's got a pretty, pretty interesting air management on the back with this wing. Also still has the rear wiper, which is great, looks great. Pretty much the same power as Mustang Mach-E GT is my understanding, just adapted for dirt. Love for Colorado, wheels. this is the spec. Yep, these wheels, these tires, it's fantastic. I mean, for Colorado, this is the spec. I mean, that's the thing. So but, Mustang Mach-E for me has always been a great electric vehicle, but I've never been able to totally fall in love with it because of some limitations. The five second power limit where you, you know, you can fry the high voltage junction box, the, at least in the early cars, if you turned ESP all the way off, they didn't totally stay off. Now they do, there's a physical button in them. And so it's like, okay, waiting for the Maki -E refresh, if you will, to get all of the, the new juicy bits in there. But this thing looks great. This was at SEMA. It's already been on this channel. Yep. And um, yeah, just, just super cool thing. I forget the name of the company. Yeah, Chin, T-J-I-N, did nice. the upfit on this particular one and uh, started with a rally, uh, a rally spec mach -E. So always cool to meet viewers at the show. Yeah. So absolutely love that. They also put an e-bike on the back from Monday Motorbikes. Not very off-roady. Yeah, well, that's when you get to the street. <laughs> oh, so you leave this one for the dirt. Yep. <laughs> and take this on the street. Nice uh, Heritage Limited Edition Bronco Sport. Yeah. Overpriced. Uh, Almost 50 grand. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm just not into the Heritage Edition <laughs> yeah. sports, to be honest. That's just not for me. What, you like those? Uh, it was okay, but not for 48 grand, I think it was, the one we had on test. It's a bit much. This This is, is cool. Beach package. This is the Bronco two-door in this particular spec, Beach Pack. That's it's a Beach got, Package concept. They have concepts for packages. Yeah, yeah, so it's not, <laughs> you can't buy this, but you should build this. Yes. <laughs> because it's so 100%. cool. And then we just have, you know, a standard F-150 uh, Lariat over here, Lightning. And this is uh, what we're so familiar with seeing. And just to, I guess, get up close with one, let's show everyone. This has been a transformative truck for Ford. It really set the stage that, you know, an existing automaker could go so hard into electric vehicles. And every Lightning owner that owns their truck loves it. Even though I still think there's room for a technical update, like I was saying, maybe more range, better charging. These things will come as a first product, uh, as an electric pickup truck. This. This had a tough job. It had to defy a lot of critics and not to say it's perfect for every task. That's why Ford still offers super duties with a diesel and all these things, because again, electric, it's still early days in my impression, um, but this can do so much for so many people. There's a never ending supply of, of need for that. If you just look over here, you'll say, you see they're showcasing the sway bar disconnect on the Bronco Raptor. It's basically a, a button on the dash that releases the left and right sway bar linkage so that you get ultimate flex uh, in the vehicle. And they're also showcasing some crawl control going up the hills and a lot of other Ford technologies built for off-roading. It's a huge course. Ford is one of the few automakers that builds vehicles in many different sectors. And so what I think is interesting is they have to build a vehicle that's competent off-road in Baja situations, but then also GTD that's about to demolish the track, and then also a Mustang Mach-E that's a daily electric crossover. And then so, the E-Transit and that whole segment and commercial. And the fleet segment's huge for Ford. So, you know, it's one of those major massive companies where they need to be the best and have excellence in each category of automotive. And to me, it's just so impressive that they're able to do what they do at the scale that they do. And it's not just Ford, it's all of the automakers. But I think at least in terms of the U.S. brands, Ford is probably the best at competency across the board for their products. Yeah, that's is my great. guess. That yeah. Raptor is a good spec, Raptor Bronco. Yeah, Expedition Timberline looks <laughs> great. Of course, we love the little spicy things. This is, again, starting to see these in Colorado. That's why I actually like living in Colorado. I mean, who doesn't love living in Colorado? <laughs> but I like living in Colorado for the car culture because you get all the off-roady versions of every vehicle because yep. everyone thinks you go off-road every day, which you don't, <laughs> or you don't have to. But you can. I want to get one of these for Francie. <laughs> this is sweet. This is a podcast studio on wheels. Well, this one's kind of set up as a mobile gaming rig. I mean, look at that. So I'm just thinking, imagine this in an e-transit for the mobile out of spec podcast would be epic. Um, I don't know though, Jordan, would you do e-transit or e-sprinter? Oh, I don't know. I guess the I'd pick the biggest one to see of the most use case. Well, the thing that I like about the e-sprinter is it charges like a boss. Yeah. Uh, I was just charging one the other day when I was at that Mercedes charging lounge. Mm -hmm. It was doing 120 kilowatts at 75%. Jeez. It was just sending the juice. It was great. So pretty cool. Got so my Xbox world... set up in the back so I can play Fortnite while Francie podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> so they have the world supply of Bronco Raptors off to your right over here, which is, you know, if you've been waiting on your truck, it's probably here it's, being yeah. used. Um, and now let's get to the Kia booth and then we'll move on to the rest of the shows. Of course, the Kia Nero is an interesting platform which shares a lot of underpinnings to the Kona. Yep. Uh, and so they have their normal mild hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and then their full Actually, that's the hybrid. That's the hybrid. They have an EV on the left, and that's the hybrid. They all look the same, yeah. <laughs> but they have all basic three versions here, which is pretty interesting. And the ones they brought all have the silly blade yeah, at the top. Yeah, of course, yeah. We, we can do it really quick. Hold <laughs> pause, we're gonna do a quick selfie or a quick photo. All right, so we're continuing along. We have the Kia Soul. Super spicy, GT line. Why did we never get the electric Kia Soul of this generation in the US? I don't know. That would have been cool. I a story. I don't know if I should share the story <laughs> that they got here. They shipped the first batch. It was planned for this car to launch in our market. Really? And then it didn't happen. So they turned the boat around with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's not efficient. I don't know if it didn't pass homologation or what it was, or they didn't think there was enough of a use case or sales case and they sent it. This is the Kia EV9 platform. It's basically eGMP. It's the largest iteration of the electric global modular platform. And you'll notice there's two different configurations here. Both are permanent magnet. This one has the inverter and power electronics sort of flattened there. And then you have up here your um, 
you know, sort of front situation where you have onboard charger and inverter and everything like that, steering gear. Uh, this is such a cool chassis. I don't know what the battery size is in EV9, maybe 100 kilowatt hours usable, plus or minus, it's yeah, right around there. That. Um, so yeah, pretty cool stuff. Uh, it's a great platform. I can't wait again to do the EV9 stuff. So let's continue with the video. They Sorry. really did bring up a lot of them. This is cool. Bike rack on the back of the EV9. Love this spec, by the way, this brown interior, sort brown of blue, blue dash yeah. situation. Nice. Looking very nice. We have the Kia Carnival right here. Now, this was electric. This, There's, this has a little bit of gravity vibes to it. So the Lucid people, when I was like, it's like a minivan, they were like, don't ever say that. <laughs> they said, don't say the M word. <laughs> yeah, don't say the M word. Um, yeah, it's got some gravity buds. Yeah. <laughs> but Alyssa did a video with this one on test. Yep. I don't even know if it was on this channel, where they took the Kia to Ikea. I think it was, yeah. yeah. It was a while did ago. Did you join her for that? No, I just remember they okay. got back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so, you know, just, just your normal Kia stuff. You have your Tellurides, your Sorentos, Sportage, your Sportages. Celtos, a lot of S names that are a bit confusing, and it's like, do you want a CV? And then pick your inch increments. Like, you want one that's three inches longer? Okay, get the next one up. The next S word. <laughs> it's just the normal car market, uh, you know, that we're in right now. Actually, we should show some of the concepts. Uh, typically, I don't like to talk about concept cars on this channel because that's exactly what they are. That's not a real thing. And it will eventually become a real thing if it with, does. And then we'll talk about it. With Kia, what's interesting is they do stick fairly close to the concepts, more than some other companies. Yes, of course. So, so let's yeah. just look over here. We have the Kia EV3 concept, which I don't think either of these will come to the US. Probably not. Is what I was hearing. So this looks epic. I wish this one did. This would be my pick. It's I like an ID3 competitor. Yeah. But like, uh, my understanding is these will actually be built on a 400 volt system architecture. Yeah. Not an 800 volt. So sort of lower cost, smaller size package. And um, wow, this is on Pilot Sport S5 tires for nice. maximum handling on your EV3. <laughs> <laughs> on your concept car. Yeah. And um, then. Oh, this one is the ugly one, I think. Not a big fan. So yeah, Jordan, I love the EV3, but what do you think of this? EV4, like the front looks fun, and then the back just kind of falls apart for me. I'll try to get an angle back here. It just looks a little awkward. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I like the EV3. <laughs> EV3 is really fun yeah, yeah, and yeah. really cool. I wish I so, would come here. But I don't think it's worth, I don't think it's been confirmed that they are coming to our market. Yeah, and there's EV5, EV2, like there's a lot of- uh, There's a whole lineup. All concepts, a numbers. lineup of concepts. And so it's like, will the EV4 line up closely with the Polestar 4? Because they're also going one through they're six. They're also being a bit confusing with their- <laughs> so at least Kia seems to be getting bigger with the numbers, whereas Polestar, the three is bigger than, bigger the, than four. the four. <laughs> I think we need to start a consortium to basically uh, get every car maker on the same page. When you say something is a three, it means it's this category of vehicle. Yeah, like comparing a Polestar three to a Model three versus a three series. Yeah, very different. <laughs> <laughs> this is confusing. <laughs> okay, so that's been the Kia haul. There's EV nines everywhere, which means to me and shows me that okay. Okay, series production models are in the US. It's just a matter of time. By the end of the year, you'll be seeing them, uh, you know, in numbers at charging stations around, which is cool. Right now, EV9, which is the, of course, the electric SUV, they're built in uh, Korea, is my understanding, but soon to be built in Alabama. I think so, yeah. Okay, so either way, in the US. State side, yep. Yep, so that later on, they'll qualify for the tax credit. Currently, they don't. Yep. Uh, so now we're, if you look ahead, we're heading out of the West Hall and into another hall, and we will continue for the next portion of this video. So we'll meet you over on the other side. You now join us in the next section of the show for a tour. If you actually look to your right, you'll see a track with uh, essentially a GTI and an ID4 going head to head, being driven um, by a remote gaming console inside at the Volkswagen booth. Francie and I did this. Jordan, you drove it with Colton. I did. I set the track time. You for set out the of track spec. record for out of We spec. learned uh, Francie's here now. Hi Francie. Hi, 
Uh, we learned that Francie's not a good remote driver. No, so. <laughs> she was not good at this. <laughs> I lapped you a couple times. Yeah, it's pretty difficult. It's not like real driving. No. So. no and what's funny is um, you can see there's a little mechanical stick here to move the cars when they crash. But when you move the car after you crash, our whole seat's bouncing around too. Yeah. <laughs> it was really funny. So anyway, it, it was like all, you know, wirelessly controlled in. That's fun, Mark. I love that. That's so. cool. Yeah. Cool marketing. But now we're, yeah, we're down here in the South Hall. <laughs> okay, so this is the Hyundai, first of two Hyundai booths. This, Hyundai is the went, in, this is the in booth. But they also have some non-ends. Well, that's interesting, yeah. Those might be in line. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, Which we'll, we won't anyway, look at. Hyundai N is really cool. They're one of the only car makers that keeps your warranty intact for track use. Which is awesome. So cool. It means they have faith in their product, maybe. Yeah. Or they're foolish, I don't know. No, I don't know which. <laughs> uh, Elantra N, we actually just parked next to a guy with an Elantra N. <laughs> he revved in the parking garage and set the... Well, because I went up to him like, dude, cool car. And he's like, ah, uh, he put it in track mode, whoop, up, 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 out the exhaust and set the car alarm off from a factory stock exhaust. So <laughs> set the car alarm or a Challenger off. <laughs> yes. The Challenger can handle the in. <laughs> the four cylinder turbo <laughs> lifestyle. Um, anyway, yeah, they're pretty spicy. Dual clutch transmissions, like pretty cool. Um, this is one of the most exciting cars of the year. Yep. We'll have a full tour coming or it's already gone up. I'm not sure uh, what the rollout status is, but um, 640 horsepower in boost mode, 600 horsepower nominal. Uh, bigger battery on this one, 84 kilowatt hour yeah. usable and uh, limited slip dip in the rear, absolute shredder. Uh, the numbers here are crazy. And if the EV6 GT is anything to go by, then this is just gonna be a whole nother level above that. So what do you think? Yeah, I, we looked at this in depth the other day, right? I think it's nice. I don't know, I don't love it. Uh, I, I think it's a nice color, it's a cool car, but well, you were really excited about it. Yeah, not because of anything that I'm looking at, because no, I know how it's gonna drive. Exactly. <laughs> it's gonna yeah. be crazy. It has like a simulated transmission, noises of combustion cars, turn all that crap out. Just, Whereas Francie wants something comfortable. <laughs> um, there is one BMW here at the show. So BMW, Mercedes, Audi, all decided not to show up. And Mazda for some Mazda. reason. Mazda. But some dealer, Auto Nation, brought their XM over here. Just a silly vehicle. I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, I've tested them. They're plug-in hybrids. It's the top BMW SUV. It's the most expensive BMW on sale. That's uh, crazy. You know, if you go for XM label, you're you know cl close to 200 grand. Uh, and it's just, uh, yeah, not the best looking car. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. Appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we'll see ya. You never know who you're going to meet at nope. the show. Oh, here we got racing going yeah, on now. He was really strong. I thought he was going to rip my arm off. <laughs> well, because I was trying to back away. I'm like, we're pulling. Like, so he was pulling me in. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, here's the little cars Down ripping. Oh, they've had an accident. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's, this is sort of like the intermediary area as we go up to uh, the cars. So we got a long, no, should we, should we go out of spec style and take the escalator? Yeah. We review electric mobility. Yeah. These are powered by electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a review of the escalator. How long does it take to, yeah. to get up there? Jordan, give us a full tour. All what right. do you think of the entrance? Entrance is acceptable. You get two levels, two two spaces before it starts to raise. Wow. Some at the airport, some of them go three or four before they start to raise up. Yep. And um, nice, smooth. You do feel a little motor cogging though. Yeah, not super smooth. Yeah, but what's nice is the railing speed and the foot speed Which are matched. Doesn't usually happen. Never happens. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a pretty good one. I'd say it's pretty consistent for the industry though. That was nice. Anyways, I, you know, now I think overall that whatever escalator that is, that's <laughs> now a good one. for the biggest hall. Yes, this is the real show over here. And the Let's first see. thing we're greeted by is the Disney version of the Ionic Five. Okay, yeah, tell us Jordan about really that. Loves the... I don't know <laughs> anything. <laughs> Jordan, we were here for a full day filming on Media Day, and the only picture Jordan no, posted the first was of this picture. Car. I posted more, but, okay, the... but at the time it was the only yeah. picture. <laughs> well, and I was, was just like. What, what do people think of this whole like random Disney collab? It does seem random, right? What is the history of? Well, well explain so, the car. What's changed? I don't know. Nothing. Badging. Not, okay. Literally nothing's different. It's just badging, well, special and, wheels. Well, and there, interior like... and software. Software? Yeah, oh, I think it has like Disney logos. That's kind stuff. of fun. Yeah. I mean, this, this car was actually in Spider-Man, which was actually kind of Sony, but sort of Marvel and Marvel is within Disney. 
So what isn't Disney now? What isn't Disney? Right? <laughs> yeah. Do we like Disney? Do we not like Disney? I don't know. I don't know either. Is Disney good? Mostly good, I think. Okay. That's my. I have a positive impression. That's my neutral PR <laughs> yeah, from the answer. Yeah, really hard. <laughs> positive oh, it's a hydrogen car, a Toyota Mirai, next to the Toyota BZ4X. Toyota is going places. Isn't that their tagline? Or let's go places. Let's go places. Okay. Yeah. Um, not many places with these two cars. No, uh, but they are beyond <laughs> zero, which is their big thing. <laughs> so okay, BZ4X. Um, With a nice wow. EV go dummy seen, charger. Yeah, the charger's not even turned on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Kyle, you have a pretty big problem with that. You'd like it to be lit up too. If you're going to put a charger next to your display, let's just show this. Just plug it in the damn wall. At least it's in the grass. It they don't have very any, environmentally wait, conscious. They don't have any cable management. So here's the impression I get as a viewer walking up here to look at the BZ4X. Cables all over the ground. They're heavy as crap. Chattamo. Why is there a Chatamo here? They don't even have Chatamo on their cars in the US market, so that's dumb. And it's not turned on. So you go, cables are heavy and stupid. I'm gonna trip over them. The charger doesn't even work. I guess they're setting them up for a realistic a real world experience. ownership experience. <laughs> Hopefully this video doesn't age well because we it just suddenly becomes really good. But oh, this dang. is Toyota's electric offering, their single electric offering. And we've seen a lot of them in here in Southern California for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. Charge is really bad. <laughs> Even so, the all-wheel drive charge is worse than the front-wheel drive. Which is interesting. Yeah, which is not good. And like way worse. I think 86 kilowatt peak or so on the all-wheel drive. It's rated at 100. You can't do it. Yep. The front-wheel drive charges at 150 kilowatts, which is acceptable one time. Yep. And then after that one charge, you're done for the day, and it charges at like 70. Not great. This is a better experience from my experience. I love the Mirai. Yep. Okay, forget hydrogen just as a car. This is a Lexus LS rear wheel drive, electric, super comfortable, shrunken a little bit, rocks to drive. It's you so get good. all the blow off noises from the hydrogen system. My Fuel favorite, my favorite Toyotas are not like really Toyotas. Like this is basically a Lexus. I love the Supra, which is basically a BMW. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, it's just like, this is such a cool car that, um, you know, there's no infrastructure to support it. So in California, this is a 70 something thousand dollar car. You can lease them for a couple hundred bucks a month. That's the move. And it comes with free hydrogen. So if you just like live next to a hydrogen station and hopefully it's online and working, which a lot of the new ones are more reliable, a couple hundred bucks a month, free fuel. Easy. It actually kind of doesn't suck. Easy. Who, who yep. Charges in three minutes. Who, who's that provided by? The hydrogen fueling station? Who runs those? No, they just give you a credit card with $15,000. And you find them and you find whichever ones are around. I forget okay. any of them. I took one on a road trip once. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, it was great. Really? It really was. I mean, I personally wanted, I didn't want to hate it. I, I came in expecting to hate it. And I was like, oh, it's kind of nice. It actually kind of works for some people. The biggest downside is you can't start your day fully charged. Yep. Because you don't have fueling stations at home. Right. And some stations only charge it to 50% because you need the high pressure stations, 700 bar to get full. Yep. And a lot of the older stations only 350 bar. So you get a half charge, Yeah, which is really funny to think about. Where'd you road trip it? I did LA, San Diego, back up here, a bunch of driving around. It did 500 something miles in it. Pretty good. Possible. Yeah, so it, was, it wasn't great. I mean, a lot of the stations like weren't working. I mean, it's like, it feels even earlier days than electric cars, but with an electric car, you can plug it into any socket. Right. With hydrogen, you have to like go to a pressurized yeah, station. That's the problem and there. That those a lot really of suck. About. We've already seen the new Prius in this episode, but they have a, a standard hybrid and a plug in hybrid. Uh, Francie, what do you think of the new Prius? Prius Prime? Doesn't matter. Either um, one. Yeah, I, I think I like it. It's definitely a, a more sporty look than the normal Prius, which I think is cool. Uh, I like the color. Well, it's now the normal one. I know. Oh, well, yeah, I guess then the, the legacy one. Things are not going well at the booth. Toyota's electrification. We <laughs> <laughs> probably forgot to charge it. We should gloss over that. <laughs> um, yeah, the new Prius rocks, I think. Yeah. You like the way it looks? Yeah, I do like the way it looks. Um, I haven't been able to drive it yet, but I think it, yeah, I, I like to look a lot better. It looks... I don't think these have the solar panel, but you can option a solar panel. Right, yeah, Jordan? the one we had on test had solar. Okay. We could get up to eight, 185 watts peak, but realistically on a sunny day I tried, we were getting about 90. Okay, so but 90 watts do? is like what my MacBook Pro charges at, and yeah. it just sat so there and charged. It's not nothing, so yeah. it's fine. <laughs> but when you can't, you sleep at night. You have to car camp in the little thing. You have to sleep during the day for it to charge from solar. 
<laughs> and then drive at night. That's what I don't understand about solar cars. No, I only meant like, you know, auxiliary stuff. You oh, wouldn't what? charge the car, but like your computer or <laughs> a lantern. <laughs> Do you want to know if it has an outlet in there? Yeah. It had two outlets. Oh, yeah, great. that's what I'm thinking is yeah. that, you know, it's probably not that useful for actually powering anything much more than like, you know, something you can take along camping. Right. Yep. We should look at the yeah. we, should, we should look at the Crown SUV because this is a brand new vehicle. I wonder, that they that would were actually debuting. make a good video, Francie, to see how much solar you could put into the battery and what you could do with it. How far could you drive on that solar? Mm -hmm. Which would probably be only a couple feet, Jordan, what for a day, turn? maybe like a quarter mile or a uh, mile. Up up to like two or three miles a day. Oh, three miles a day Which isn't is bad. Nothing. No. Yeah, you can really get around a campsite. This is the new Crown Signia. What a machine! It's got it's the like, very Prius front end. It's like a, a lifted wagon, if you will. Everyone's been raving about it. In the, I like in the it press. more than the Crown. What are they raving which about? Which is just Kyle? like the Coupified version. The styling, version. that it's like a wagon coming to the US. And it's the Crown naming, so it's a little bit higher quality. We've seen a lot more wagons lately, haven't we? Not bad. Not or enough. Semi wagon. Not enough. Yeah, especially wagons. for the Euro market. Yeah. Another hybrid CBT, though, just what we need. Okay, Venza. These things are cool because they have the electrochromatic sunroof. Red. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Jordan, are you more of a Toyotathon family or a Happy Honda Days? Ah, uh, I like the name Happy Honda Days, but <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Well, in this house, we celebrate Toyota. Yeah, get out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing to argue about at Thanksgiving, though. A very yeah. PG-friendly argument. Yeah, absolutely. We have GR Corolla, which just looks crazy With cool. Random crates. Yeah, that, sure that looks saying. like a trial hazard. I don't know what, <laughs> what's going on there. Okay, we got it. Is that a Supra? This is the GR section. Toyota offers three different manual cars right now, which is pretty awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, and manual other... Tacoma or no? Mm, I don't know. I don't they know, still know if have the that. new one does it. But what other company has that many manuals? Yeah, I don't know. Props to Toyota. What Toyota built some incredible cars. They also built some really crap stuff. So it's just you know, whole range. I mean, it is interesting. This booth is basically a Subaru, a BMW, and a Toyota. Right. But. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had the Super Manual on test, and it rocked. I think we should just move on. Uh, <laughs> they put a bunch of people in wheelchairs over here, which is kind of cool to play basketball and stuff. So that's kind of neat. Yeah. Uh, but Nissan had a huge unveil this show, oh, Jordan. We're getting and over there, too. We're just coming over here till the Thrill Street is what they're calling this booth. Yeah. I don't know if everyone's going to be able to handle it. <laughs> so I wonder if they're on display. They must be because they did a huge announcement with the press. It was like, come to the Nissan unveil. And we got to find what they unveiled. Because I think they're over here by the GTR and the Z because that's what right. goes with it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a really <laughs> spicy product. I think our audience is going to love this. Something I've been waiting for for quite some time, actually. What do you think of the Z color, by the way? Love it. It's like a... A wine. Yeah. Um, where? Are I didn't they? see them. Um, what the heck? We, anyway. <laughs> okay, well, we should get away from the music. Yeah. Maybe you can explain what they've unveiled, Francie. What they unveiled? Yeah, the big Nissan unveil, remember? Yes. Which wasn't that big. Yeah, it's huge. What was it? You don't remember? I do remember. You just said you remember. <laughs> it's the pajamas. Yes. <laughs> Is that how you say it? Pajamas? Okay, I say pajamas. What? Oh. Yeah. Pajamas. We've always said pajamas in our house. That's another You're the thing southern there. one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a pajamas. huge skin in that aria. So, yeah, they invited everyone for a big pajama reveal. Maybe we'll have a photo of it here, but I mean. By the way, hard body inspired concept. That's pretty cool. Yep. These concepts are awesome. We we filmed these uh, in Chicago. Yeah, we, Chicago Auto Show. Yeah, new Tell Pathfinder. Yeah, new Pathfinder. We filmed V6. that too. We filmed this. We had a prototype one of these. It was very slow. Yeah, and it was 285 out. horsepower at altitude. But it's now a torque converter oh, wow. auto instead Ooh. of uh, a CVT, yeah. which is much better for nine what, speed. Yep. Yeah, it can actually tow and work as a vehicle now. So Thrill Street, what exactly is the thrill that Nissan is bringing? Oh. I, we have the demonstration oh, right, right here. Thank you for bringing this up. The, I almost forgot. The demo vehicle. This is the Thrill Street demo vehicle, oh the 2024 Nissan Leaf SV Plus. <laughs> I think there was a question for a little bit if they were going to continue with the Leaf. But it's good that they're not. I mean, especially with. Well, they haven't announced plans to kill it yet, I don't think. Right. Well, sure. I mean, there's no way they can keep making this it thing. It does still torque steer and it can burn rubber, so it's not completely dead yet. Hey, as a Leaf owner, 
<laughs> okay. Okay. Shadow biased. Should biased we die? <laughs> <laughs> and then they have the Nissan Aria. This is the Platinum E Force, the Platinum Plus E Force, the top spec. If you ever want to be confused, you should look at the full product offering ordering guide for Aria because there's <laughs> 5,000 different configurations and they're all named like in force or in, I don't even know. They, it's like the same word and you don't know which is better. <laughs> <laughs> but look at the interior. This one has the blue. This is the same spec that we reviewed on this channel. That is nice. Honestly, not the highest peak charging rate, but it does hold it pretty long. Uh, and it launched with CCS. So Nissan is the only company right now to offer a J1772 Chatamo and CCS vehicle. And soon Nax. Will they phase out completely Chatamo before Nax? We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they built out uh, uh, part of the EVgo network that is specifically built with Chatamo connectors for, for their the, customers, yep. and that build is still going on. They haven't built this dude just the yet, directed so. the ID4 over there. <laughs> awesome. that? That so this is the electric track, which I don't know what was happening in the media day, but they were driving them at 10 miles an hour, and, and now, now we just hear straight tire I mean, squeal. This seems a little bit more like Thrill Street to me. Than, this uh, is Thrill Street. Send it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, phone breaks! <laughs> the dude in the gray ID4 is getting it. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, let's watch him come through. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> Did he have ESP off in there in ESC sport mode? Let's see if he guns it this time. <laughs> yeah, buddy! Nice. And full brakes. <laughs> We're having fun. That's epic. Man, if you ever want to buy an executive demo at your car dealership, this is what they go through all day. <laughs> um, Lexus has some cool stuff over here. One of my favorite cars of all time. We've showed it so many times on this channel. The LC500 just absolutely rocks. Um, they have the RCF, sort of a spicy version over there. And they're doing drives of Aria and ID4 on this track. Jordan. Exploded. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you hit a bump too hard. Um, no, this is this is a really cool display. So we all know um, ID4's localized production in Chattanooga for the U.S. market, model year 2023 and onwards. Francie and I were just in Chattanooga, actually. Sure were. And um, yeah, awesome car. It's MEB. It's due for a refresh in 24. So ID4 will get the new software, but I don't know if it's going to get the APP 550 motor. I don't know. I think that comes 25. Volkswagen was telling me they have two stages of facelift for the ID4, and it made no sense. <laughs> so they should just do it all at once, because all the technology they're going to put in it exists today in the ID7. Do you know what MEB stands for? Mo uh, modular electric toolkit. Yep. Electrification. Electrification toolkit. Yeah. Why toolkit? Why is B toolkit? I guess it's German things. So. OK, <laughs> that makes no sense. Uh, of course, we have an ID4 sitting at an EA station. Fully charged, unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> Typical ID4 owner blocking an EA space with here. Uh, but cool that they have them on display. Turn and um, yeah, it's actually turned on. That's like See? normally. This not. makes you think EA works. Yeah. The NIAX isn't working. That's accurate. That <laughs> I actually put it into service mode the other day. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. Now we, yeah, it's, it's coming back to life. Yeah, these things suck. But. Uh, the new dispensers, okay, at least better than the older ones. We're improving, I think. yeah. Um, okay, I love the spec, by the way, on the ID4. We've never shown one with the white and blue interior on this channel. What's wrong it's a there? lot of blue, but I think it's the one to get. It works. Yeah, it's not overwhelming. A nice amount of blue. So they have one, two, three, four ID4s all here on display. But then they also have some other ID models, like the ID Buzz. And this is the long wheelbase ID Buzz, the North American spec version. You can tell it's the long wheelbase because it has the square in the door. Nice. That's the quick way to tell when it has the window. And um, oh, these things just look amazing. I have a full tour already on the channel of this car, of course, but. I love this one. You want this? Yeah, I would love this one. Yeah. But not this color. Oh, well, no, not this color. I'd rather, I mean, from what's on display, I think the orange, but there's a green, right? Yes. I think the green would be the Green winner. is nice, yep. But, I mean, this just seems like the lifestyle. The lifestyle vehicle. Been. Yeah. Here's the ID7. Me and Tom Malogny reviewed the exact same color and spec. Yeah, y'all had fun. In we had France. fun. Great car. Went all the way over to the French. And then we also have an orange ID buzz. 
Yeah. There was a whole charge port kerfuffle on Twitter over this thing. Do you want to explain that really quick? Well, I didn't know anything was happening. I just wanted to explain how the charge port worked, which is when the door is open like it is now and the charge port is not, you'll notice that the charge port hits the door. Yep. But if you close the door and then open the charge port, there's actually a secondary latch that stops the door from coming out. So you can plug in with the door open, which you can't do on a Honda Odyssey while fueling because the fuel door is you know, basically right next to the sliding door. So this is like kind of an issue a little bit because like you can open the door all the way and then like try and plug in. But um, if you open the charge port and then the door, it's not gonna squish your charging connector or anything. I mean, there's a door on the other side, just. This so, yeah. one is also equipped with, hold on one second. This requires a little bit of skill. Okay, it's also equipped with the Euro tow package boom and nice. then you can knock it into uh locked position right there Thank and then you. all you do is you can pull it it'll release and then a good old click back in the bumper so this is a euro spec long wheelbase model interesting yeah i don't think the u.s spec will have the fold out tailgate but that's essentially how the trailer hitch works on these and most euro cars some of the premium cars are fully powered all the way out wow. and in that's how you know you got a nice one. All right, let's continue. We have another ID4 on display. This one's a Pro S Plus, sort of a top spec. You can tell because of the dual tone color on this particular one um, and the, I think, ugly wheels. What do you think of these wheels? Don't like it. They don't look like the premium top spec wheel. I don't like it, nope. And they are? And I kind of preferred the early ID4 offer structure to what they're doing now with Pro S Plus. I don't know. I'm confused. I haven't. I just need to spend some time in the configurator. Too many options. Okay. ID4s. Yeah, ID4s. Of course, they have Tiguan. They have the new Atlas on display over here, which just has a, a bigger, fatter tail light, uh, part of the mid-cycle refresh. And then there's also a GTI, a GLI, which you can still get both of these in manuals. Nice. Which is great. That guy back there says hi, Kyle. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't say hi. Was did he work for Volkswagen? Um, I think he might. He had a name tag. He's following us. Oh, okay. We can. We'll we'll come back. Okay. Um, Lexus. Uh, we Love should continue this more. Color. Okay. This is the new LX and the new this GX, one. and both of them rock. They're so nice. So this makes up for the BZ4X, in my opinion, <laughs> because this is so cool. They're just still catering to the enthusiasts: the Supra, the GR86, the Corolla, and these things. There's a lot of Toyota love it for me as well because I love their off-roading products. I love Tacoma. I love, you know, this especially. Timon is going to go crazy over this thing because he owns a GX yep, of course. previous generation. Once these hit 300,000 miles, Timon will buy one. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, they're they're just great. You get the uh, the new TX as well right here. This is a new model that we haven't seen before. It's sort of the Highlander Lexus. Yep the Lexus Highlander, and they stack them in a way where I don't think the trunk would close for them to actually display the cargo capacity. You can see they stick out farther. So I'm not- And right here too, especially. I so it's- That's fine. work. I bet you five bucks. Yeah, hit the button. Let's try it. See if it'll close. that. I won't close. Ah, uh, see, they disabled the trunk because they knew it wouldn't They have close. no faith in their own product. <laughs> so they're showing off a, this fake advertising. No anyway. <laughs> yeah. If you have one, please stack it just like that. Let us know. Yeah. I think that the window's far back enough that it'll close. Okay. I'll settle this bet somehow. Genesis. Always have nice booths, Genesis do. Genesis they is do. capturing the... I'm trying to figure out how to describe what Genesis well, is. Well, they really lean into the Korean architecture, the like Hanok design of the the buildings. Look at you. That's, that's, well, that's what they say in the press materials. I don't know. <laughs> I just regurgitate press releases, Kyle. Okay. <laughs> that's a dangerous proposition. Um, GV60, of course. Wait, wait, let me guess if I can guess all the models. Okay. Okay, you have GV80, GV70, yep. GV60, G90, G80 and G70. Their naming dimensions make more sense than most. I'm okay with it. Yeah. I like the GV60. My mom owned one of these that's kind of cool looking. And uh, you can get GV60 Performance, which is like below EV6 GT, which is interesting because this is the top brand. Yep. But they think they lean towards top as in luxury versus the other ones are like, oh, we're more sporty. I just remember my mom's car would do the most insane front wheel burnouts because <laughs> they juiced the front motor, but kept the rear motor the same. Yeah. And when you hit the boost motor, just the Which front is like BZ4X. Your mom was doing that, right? My mom drives pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, they also have unveiled the GV80 Coupe, I think. I'm not sure. I don't know why you would unveil a new combustion vehicle in 2023, but. Hey, that's what I was saying on the podcast. Yeah. And then you were like, no. So, Everyone was like, ice cars are amazing, Francie. Why would you have that opinion? I said that just Thanks so, so she would get mad. I, I said that just because I knew I This is how we get Francie talking. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I do think it's, uh, of course, y'all, uh, there's cool ice cars, right? But I'm just like, mm, I don't know. What I'm impressed by. Oh, yeah, Francie, what do you think of coupified SUVs? Because that's what's been unveiled here. Yeah, so they unveiled the normal SUV and then the coupe version. Mm, I mean, I guess, sure. But, but but sure for what? Well, I think that, why why coupify it? Exactly. That's what we're asking you. My, I don't know why you would coupify it. I guess for a, a different look. It's got more of the tapered so, end. But... So, uh, yeah, so sedans were popular. And then we had wagons, which were fit more things. And then we had SUVs, which were like lifted wagons so you could see over everything. Now we're cutting the back off SUVs because that's more sleek. Next, we're going to see lowered ones, which are going to be sedans, which will be back in style. It's so this it's whole weird cyclical. cyclical... <laughs> just more and more offering. Please this... give us your Genesis GV60 review. Okay, where do I start? Um, well, I think this is a cool aspect, right? That you can do Vita. Is it G? Vita L, technically. Vita L. Vita X. X. Vita H. Vita X is everything. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, you can plug anything into that. All right. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Let's see. Uh, it's nice on the inside here. Um, nice cool interior. interior. I think that more and more cars should be implementing the Vita X technology, of course. Um, yeah, I, I think the Genesis has a pretty great look. In terms of how it rides, Kyle, what do you know? Um, quite a bit. What do you want to know? I want to know everything. So, of course, tell me the battery size and then the... 77.4 kilowatt hours. What about the range? Uh, 250-ish miles, 260 in the performance trim. Okay. Something like that, 230. Interesting. Two, 230 to 250, Jordan? I don't know. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, something like that. What about the motors? What about Whoa. the crystal ball? Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> that was my, that's the whole reason my mom bought the car. Okay, I, I think little things like this really win people over because it, yeah. it feels nice. Um, and then when you shut it off, it whoop. How do I flip it back? You don't. Try, you, it, uh, you don't? No, it doesn't. It. Uh, I think you may have forced it open this way. I didn't force anything. <laughs> I, you can play back the tapes. <laughs> it, it should be tied to power cycle, oh, uh, cool. is my understanding. Yeah. So did your mom like it? Yeah. Well, what happened? Why'd she... Because uh, it, re it relies on public charging, and they had to go to Florida, and she's like, I'm not going to go to EA and charge this thing. What do you mean it relies on public charging? Well, you can't use superchargers with it. Oh. So not at The current CCS public charging. And they don't have home charging in Florida. Oh. So she was like, I'm there for, you know, a few months. So she got a Model oh. Y. And I think she made out pretty well on this one. So it didn't like... Yeah. Does she miss it at all? Yeah, I think so. I think she prefers this. Yeah, because this is totally different from a Tesla. I mean... It's it's more like your typical car experience, mm -hmm. you know. Typical so. Genesis experience, just electrified, which yeah. is nice. Nice B and O sound system. I don't mind this. Sometimes they can really go wrong here. It's nice. Great. Yeah. Let's get the heck out of this. <laughs> <laughs> I was starting to fall asleep. It was so comfy. We have not slept this week. Yeah, I, I should point out what's something cool is they've basically powered this whole thing off the car and these are remote batteries you scan your credit card it puts a one dollar deposit you can walk around with this thing charge your phone back up and if you return it they won't charge you fifty dollars yeah it's nice <laughs> brilliant and yeah, if you want it you get a fifty dollar wireless phone charger which is a horrible so, ideal yeah that's not good <laughs> Well, I think the Vita X technology is really cool, but I guess automakers are also thinking, of course, how can we make more products to sell with this? So. I was wondering where this is. They put the electric GV70 there. Electric uh, inside. GV70. Don't you think that's dumb? Because it's actually fully electric, but they call it electrified. Was it ever not? Uh, so they have the gas one right here. Yes. But electrified is like when automakers call things like hybrids or even a mild hybrid, it's electrified. Oh, no more electric this is actually the uh, maybe the correct usage but everyone else has kind of ruined the name yeah, yeah. now everything's electrified it's like my car is a total volt battery <laughs> <laughs> jordan you're saving the planet yeah <laughs> electrified miata uh, let's a lot of great a... use of plants in here it feels very cozy Autocross. are they real are they real probably not real I know, i'm guessing kind of real. i don't know what do you think let us know in the comments <laughs> let us know in the comments. Oh, oh interesting so they had okay. a Ionic 5 in right here, and now they don't. This they is do. where we this shot the tour. This is Kyle's favorite car of the, wasn't it? Yeah, but not this one. No, I know where yeah. it was. 
Yeah, yeah. Do you feel a little disappointed? Yeah, this is a good spec Ionic 6, green I with the white interior. I love these colors. Yeah. I love these blue green colors. Really? Yeah. I think this is really great. I mean, like the Rolls Royce Spectre we drove had awesome blue green color. Yeah. Um, so this is the same spec Ionic 6 that I drove on the first drive. Awesome. Oh, sorry about that. And then they also have a I Nexo. Speaking so, of hydrogen. Yeah, what about it? Look to your right and you'll... I didn't know if you were talking. I'm sorry. I just couldn't hear you. It's okay. I don't it is loud in here. Yeah. Nexo, hydrogen. Nexo. Hydrogen fuel cell. We've been talking about hydrogen a lot lately. I know. It's I kind of feel like that's a sham. But it's kind of like... <laughs> I feel like it's a sham? I feel like my instant reaction when I hear hydrogen is, ah, that's dumb. But why? I kind of like it. But why is it so dumb? It's a very it's a inefficient. Dish. Sure. So to to generate the equivalent oh, yeah, hydrogen, like you could just the BMW just... Uh, presentation, which was really funny. I think how they presented that because they're like, you you lose fifty percent of the power, but if you make <laughs> it in the desert where you generate fifty four percent of power, then it only drains. It was like just scaling it up, basically. <laughs> basically, they like, said if you make more, you only lose this much. No, their main point was we have an oversupply of renewables at certain times throughout of the day yes. that we can't store because we don't have enough storage in our grid or enough use case yes. or usage at that time. So rather than curtailing generation, we can just do something else with it, which they said, let's make hydrogen. Yes. But you could also power data centers. You can do other things. So it doesn't have to be just hydrogen. It could be a load. It could be other types of battery storage. But BMW was like, let's make hydrogen. Yeah. And then make hydrogen cars. That was their presentation. Thanks. Thanks for articulating that a bit better than I could. I don't know if it was very good. This is like the most base spec Elantra. Oh, wow. Front center. Sometimes you just got to go basic, right? Yeah. I mean, I like a base car from time to time. Man, they're really, that surface is so loud. It's very squeaky. It so is. Hyundai has their own test track for EVs, not to be confused with the one that Nissan and Volkswagen are sharing. And they seem to be going slower here than yeah. the Volkswagen Nissan one where they're ripping. Interesting. Um, okay, so models. We had Ionic 5, Ionic 6, Tucson PHEV. So this is like all the electrified stuff, I yep. guess. Except this one, is this the Elant Elantra? This is the Elantra hybrid. Yeah, so just the standard. So this hybrid. carpet is electrified. This car is actually a good deal and a really nice car. Yeah. I like these. Okay, now you have the regular Tucson and you have the Santa Cruz. I love which the is Santa cool. Cruz. And then you have the um, Palisade over here. So many names you have to remember. Santa Fe. No, Palisade. Palisade, sorry, yeah. Yeah. And is this one the calligraphy, the way you can tell? It's, yes, it is. You can always tell if it's the nice one, if they spent the money and then it has the extra light here in the uh, bumper. And then it has like the nice seats and everything like that. <laughs> yeah, but this is really it. Um, okay, there's also the new Santa Fe. So this yeah, is the big unveil for this them. This. Yeah, very exciting. Also the fact that you can buy it on Amazon. Yeah, that's right. You can purchase these directly from Amazon. Anyway, what, what's crazy is like, this is such a great looking vehicle. It's so cool. Why is it not electric? Yeah, I guess, well, we can <laughs> <laughs> trigger her. Yeah, I mean, I, sometimes I have to take sides for the sake of content no, I because don't. I can argue both ways. I think I think that obviously, I think some ice introductions are interesting as well. But yeah, I mean, this yeah. should be electric. It should be. Well, I think they basically unveiled their last combustion one. So that's what a lot of companies are doing. They're all unveiling their last combustion. Some of them may get a big deal about it, like Lotus. This is our last combustion car well, that's ever. That's great because that's a sports car. So let's embrace that. Yeah. Let's celebrate it. Let's, I'm all for keeping combustion engines around if they're engines that are enjoyable to drive. Yeah. I don't want a 1.6 or 2 liter four cylinder Santa Fe. Some people well, don't care. The ice yeah. bands are coming. Okay. I want to know what this crazy colored thing is. By the way, the is. new front end of the Sonata, which we're looking at the back end right now, looks great. Let me show you this. In general, they're styling. Think about ice bands? Looks amazing. Yep. Nice what do you blade. Think about the ice bands that states are enacting. No, don't like it. You don't like it? No. That's I think, a good podcast debate, too. I mean, I, I think. We talked about it on a couple of podcasts, but alone. Yeah, there are carbon. Um, Need, needs to reduce our carbon, but also, in my opinion, it goes like if electric cars are truly better, people will just naturally buy those. Really? This is the new Kona. New Kona I don't looks think that sweet. That's true. Okay, well, let's do a podcast on it. Okay. New Kona uh, EV on this one. I think she's sleeping in there. She's just <laughs> <laughs> Must be a nice place to be. It must be a vault in there. <laughs> <laughs> really, really tired. Okay, are they ripping these things around at all, no. or are they just going a mile an hour? 
I think they're going a mile an hour and they have external speakers that are tricky. I'm not sure this convinces someone to buy an electric car. Really? What do you think? These Jordan? little tracks? I think it's I more mean, of an amusement thing. They can they can show off the instant torque, zero to ten miles an hour, which is when you feel it. Okay, the most important thing here. Oh is my just, gosh. I would you've written you this, so I've please give it. us you your review. Written it, though. No, I know, but please give us the review. Uh fantastic first and last mile test um technology i don't know <laughs> it's, it's 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 called the honda moto compacto moto compacto which is spiritual successor to the moto compo which was basically a failed experiment in the 80s uh that came in the back of a city turbo so this which is we never even got in the states can you zoom in on those so our viewers can see them it's a bit of a suitcase with handlebars two wheels and a seat how yeah. big's the battery um really small i don't remember the 6.8 amp hours or something like that oh, i wonder if you could power it with the solar panel on your prius toyota so that's what's interesting hot the prologue and this had no co-development obviously right. this because is prologue's ultium this was package. developed this was actually a passion project from a honda employee and they had like competitions for like ooh, who's the coolest idea and they were like wait let's build it and um, they did. But it's also kind of a shame because this is where big companies fail. Yeah. Because they're launching a brand new electric SUV at the same time they're launching this. And this does not fit in the storage compartment of that SUV. Almost, but like not quite, which is silly. Yeah. So yeah. It should have a mobile docking station so it can charge. And you can like maybe even keep the battery 80% and say, I'm about to deploy the Moto Compacto. Or, or a frunk with this size would be awesome. Yeah. This, this is what I, what, what I fail to understand is the integration yeah. of most of these companies. And that's where the new startups, Rivian, Lucid, Tesla, are smoking everyone. Yeah. Very so this, this might yeah. do okay because it's it's a scooter, but it is priced a bit high for the specs, but it's also Honda, whereas a lot of the other scooters are random companies from Amazon. These are like 900 bucks. A yeah. thousand, yeah. But you can buy them from Honda dealer websites for like 850 to 900. But yeah. like, you wouldn't ride this who would ride this where? I mean, on you... city streets, they, they they sell it as first mile and last mile to, yeah, uh, transportation. Through this city streets, right? I so, would be scared to drive. This top way. speed, 15 miles an hour. Yeah. Full send. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. Nice passing on the outside. Nice. That's gonna be Vegas tonight. What, what was it like watching a bunch of journalists ride these? Oh, things? so they kept crashing. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. oh, no. <laughs> and you can even see it in some of the videos. Like yeah. they just kept crashing, which is hilarious. Because they were probably taking the racing line. And well, going... they were they were just like full throttle, just instantly full <laughs> throttle. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm glad this isn't a track event I think with like that's Supras. Why I'm bad yeah. at those driving games because I just pedal to the metal. <laughs> yeah, that's what you did in the Volkswagen one. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta go fast. So, um, okay, there's an overlanding off-road section of the show. And My favorite thing is in this one. This is cool. Oh, great. Well, Francie, section. walk us through. I'm loving the old G-Wagon here. Well, I mean, we, if you, if we want to go over we everything. We should just take a, really, a really quick tour. A really quick tour. G-Wagon, awesome. A lot of tint options, you know, where you can dream about when it's warm again outside. And, and it's always nice here in L.A. This, this thing is sick. This Some is cool awesome. Land Cruisers around as well. We have a Jeep with a Jeep trailer. Literally, it's just the back of a Jeep. We have the Optima Rivian R1T that we've seen at every event. And I mean, we've done so much. We have a full tour. This truck has a lift kit on it as well. Getting around. And uh, my friend Sam from Overland Rough Racks, same racks I have on my truck. It's got the eye camper on the back. Um, honestly, very similar to how we have our truck set up. So very cool. What do you cool. think about this uh, graphic here? Similar to what we're doing, Same um, it's different. got the uh, direct current engineering uh, trailer, 60 kilowatt hours in this. You can power up your campsite for the day. Ryan over your talked truck. all about this on one of the podcasts when we he went to an overlanding event. This is one of the products that was featured. Um, Great. I've also done it when we kitted out our Rivian. We filmed this one. So this is we've given this enough free videos. Huge solar. <laughs> yep. Got it, yeah. um, but then you have uh, some cool like other Rivians, just R1S with a rooftop tent here. And then um, R1T Rebel Rally truck, which is that's pretty cool. Sick. Mm -hmm. Good wrap on that. This is like my favorite thing right here. This is my favorite thing. Really? Yeah. Okay, tell us about it. Um, so, <laughs> well, basically, uh, I was sorry, excuse us. Um, reading about their story, and um, I guess it was a couple with their dog. Go play outside. You can look them up. Um, everything but they were going to you know they got a quote of course as this typically goes with doing a build out and they were like that is oof that would hurt so then they built it out themselves it says don't touch so i'm not and um yeah i mean i just love wood build outs i think it's just really homey put a cabin in your 
in your travels and go play nice outside. Nice walnut kind of looking wood. Yeah. It's really cozy. It's really cozy. I think they really have the cabin feel in here, which I really love. It makes me want to take it and go somewhere. Yeah, and some some of these camper warm. things, like Kyle's van, feels very stale. Yeah, this so there's feels like really the cozy. modern, huge build out that has like everything you need. And it's kind of like, you know, the industrial apartments that we see now. But this, I think, this kind of, I don't know, I would say artistry, right? A little yeah. bit. This, Style. Cozy Bohemian just, chic. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> Cozy Bohemian chic. That is um, unmatched, in my opinion. It is a bit annoying to have the kitchen on this side, the sink on the other side, mm, but that's yeah. okay. Yeah, <laughs> you just got to take some more steps. How dare you? <laughs> the Apple Watch tells me that every day. Please and then go I walk. I love this cab. Right hand drive, awesome. Yeah. The hat is perfect. Yep, everything about this. Yeah. It's good. It's just a nice mix. Love Land Cruiser builds, <laughs> so I'm very happy. Modern with it. day and age. Let's go back to nice the tour, Francie. Thank you. Nice tour. We got the shift pod situation over here. Shift pod, take a nap. Yeah, they got their little, are those yurts? What are those things? I mean, they're called shift pods. So they're like little tents, yurts. Ryan again went and slept in one of these actually when he did the overlanding event. So he slept in there like two nights and he said it was really warm and it blocked out the sun, which are things that can bother you maybe, or maybe that's exactly what you like when you're camping to feel Darkness. cold and like you're <laughs> but like the sun waking you up so i think you can really um i mean it seems like it would be great for spending long times uh, long periods of time outdoors i don't know what it's like to set up and take down though sometimes have, i just they like have a whole bunch of them though jeez didn't realize this before let's just go hang out yeah <laughs> we'll be in a shift pod we gotta go to subaru then Subaru, Acura, then Honda, then GM. So Kyle Subaru Chevy. always goes crazy with their displays and their booths. Last year it rained. Yeah, that's right. They brought rain indoors <laughs> to LA. They had puppies this year or no? I didn't yep, see any. Yep, they do. Oh, okay. I didn't see any puppies. But they usually only bring them on media day. Oh, that, oh. that's possibly true, yeah. yeah. So they might not have them right now. We're on the public day again. But they the media day, they had car. puppies. Yeah, their safety rating. Showing their safety. Which, I, I mean, I drive a Subaru and I, I do love it. I do want to point out that Subaru has fake rocks and Lucid has real rocks. That's so. true. <laughs> so who's the real one here? Lucid. <laughs> White with um, the bronze wheels is This nice. is the new Forester. Brand new Forester. Uh, wah, wah. There's value worth smiling about. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, okay. It looks about the same. Uh, they took the display from the Outback, so that's nice. <laughs> so moving on. <laughs> I don't think I actually have anything to say about it. Really? I'm, I'm genuinely... That's your review. <laughs> yeah. Normally I can talk forever about a car. Not that one. Yeah. And not this one. This looks awful. What is this? Oh, this is like... You know, nor I'm normally a Subaru guy. Well, I think Subaru, their, it says sport, their though. history, their story past has so many great As models. Fires keep but, but it seems like they the try to keep changing something and make it more, going. I don't know, something every year. But I think they need to go back to the basics of what Subaru no, was. No, that's what they need to build right over there. Some <laughs> WRC cars. <laughs> just go to VermontSportsCar.com and just buy everything. <laughs> and just make some spicy Subarus. Subaru is meant to be a performance brand. It's all see, about... Well, they're coming with like a three-row SUV next, right? They have one. No, sorry, EV. Oh, didn't that, know that. Really? Or something. I mean, they've talked about how they're going to have something in the future, but it's so... Let's uh, just hope vague. it's not... I just want to say, I know. one person was standing by the Forester. Everyone's crowding around these. So that Are should say something. And that's a new vehicle launch. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, give us, give us the old WRX. Okay, new Honda Prelude. That looks good. Looks great. Very concept -y. Manual V6, I think, is the plan. Early days, <laughs> prototype. But then they also have the Prologue. Which doesn't quite fit the Mono Honda Moto Compacto. Right, but it, <laughs> so this is basically a Lyric or a Blazer EV underneath, right, Jordan? Yep, Ultium underpinnings. So fully electric. Looks good, though. I think it has the smaller battery only. Let's see if it has any specs. The first spec it lists is the size of the instrument cluster. Okay, what, that's what good. What about the battery? Like these are... 300 miles. Yeah, but that doesn't say the battery size. No, that's all they want you to know. So two wheel drive configuration with a full right. charge. Just to let you know here in the Honda display. Uh, it literally says nothing about the, the battery stuff. Stuff. It so says vehicle is locked. If you do want to scan those... It is. <laughs> we tested that. 
Yeah, Go so, but the Honda, the Moto Compacto can fit, just it not fits in the, the trunk. But the, yeah, the underfloor is just barely too well, small. But make sure to give that a scan while oh, you're they, the they were so they close. close. They were just close. Just this thing. Yep. Amazon gift card. Oh, I back hate to the, that. Back to the drawing board. <laughs> I hate that. Oh, my God. Okay, but the car looks good. Yeah, good color, actually. Yeah, I mean, what's more interesting to me about this is the ZDX. Yeah, which we should go look at. Yeah, we should just go there. All right, we've I basically mean, seen the Honda booth. Odyssey. I think Honda is doing a really good job at making good looking cars, very economical. They're a lot smaller than Toyota. Yeah. People don't realize As a that. company, yeah. People yeah. think of them as the same. Like a tapu, you know? But like the Odyssey is just great. They're just like, the Japanese in general are just doing a really shit job at making electric cars. Yep. Because they don't want to? I just, yeah, th this. they don't believe in it. Yeah. This is awesome. Integra Type S. Manual, kind of coupe hatchback It's situation. basically a nicer Civic Type R. Yep. And um, yeah, great shifter in this one as well. Yep. So I haven't driven it, but I'd really like to have a go. And then Acura only brought the Integra Type S's and ZDX's. That's all they're trying this to This is the perfect Acura two car solution. It is. You get your sports manual weekend blaster, which is great, and your daily electric thing. And this spec is the one to show. This looks great in this yes. color. Yeah. So this is also the same thing as the Prologue. It looks a lot bigger than the Prologue. You think so? Do you I think not? Honda's doing it a does. good job at making big cars look small, like the Accord yeah. inside, the Civic inside, so spacious, Okay. but they look slim. I think that's what Honda's good at. Um, okay, but um, I already made a review of this one. I actually thought it was my favorite of the Ultium-based SUVs. I have to agree. Is so, the charging port port as slow? No, oh, it's I a manual one. Oh, that's good. Yeah, okay, fixes it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Acura, have they Honda Acura? Have they committed to Nax? Yes, right? I think so. I don't know. I'm thinking really hard about it. Yes, <laughs> we've done podcasts on like all of them. I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Yes. That one's on Continental tires. This one's on Michelin. That one's also on Michelin's. So that's not unusual. But, uh, you know, adaptive damper. This is going to be the sportiest of the bunch on the Ultium platform. So you'll have the, like, Honda Prologue, which I think will be the cheaper or cheapest. I don't know, actually. But that, that's going to be, like, the small battery only, kind of basic. Yep. The ZDX will be the sporty one. The Lyric is going to be the luxury one. And the Blazer is, like, the mix of everything. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, probably my least favorite. Yeah, yeah. I think the bla <laughs> the Blazer is my least favorite of that bunch as well. But I love this one. I think this looks great. You can get Super Cruise, but they call it Acura something. I put it in the video. Their own I name. Yeah. yeah. Honda did announce. Honda announced next. Yeah. You got a note on your phone of all of them. I do. I have a note. We've got. I think we're just <laughs> waiting for Mazda, Mitsubishi, Stellantis, then Fast and VW. Did you say Lucid? No. We're not waiting for this. Oh, yeah, no, I, I couldn't. I only heard like a bit of that. I named what we are waiting for. Oh, OK. Or who's holding out? VinFast hasn't switched. No, and they're not, not here not this year. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, we, right. we did see a VinFast on the Canyon Roads. Yeah, we parked next to what? Oh, this was so funny. <laughs> we were we have a BMW M3 on test this week, and we were all just up for a rip in the canyons last night. And I we pulled over to, at the city overlook just to like check out the views. And there was a VinFast in the parking lot on manufacturer plates. And I get out, I go, wow, what do you think of your VinFast? So cool. And the lady goes, she goes, eh, she works for a VinFast. And then they shut the doors. And they hid inside <laughs> it. <laughs> so, good review. <laughs> yep. That was the, that's the whole that interaction. I was so excited to talk to them about it. Uh, we're at Chevy. They went big. Yeah, another big booth. Uh, I think way less interesting looking than Ford's, but they brought everything. Like, good grief. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how many cars there are here. Okay, so we have the new Traverse starting us off with the all-terrain options on this particular one. It's the Z71 pack, which is traditionally the, you know, sort of off-roady one. They have the Colorado Trail Boss, and this just looks awesome. Love these things. You have the Trail Blazer. This is the active. We reviewed this 1.3 liter three-cylinder engine in this. I hate that they call it a trail blazer because this is the last thing I would blaze a trail in. I agree 100%, <laughs> but I actually kind of like it. Well, yeah, I still like it, Yeah, but the naming. And then they have the Equinox, which, which is Tom Malagny's most excited vehicle of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. He's like James May wanting the uh, Dacia Sandero to come right. back. And that's, Tom, that's the Equinox. Tom loves the Equinox. <laughs> Whenever I talk to him, he has he reminisces about his old Equinox, which is such a shitbox, <laughs> and he just loved it. And so now he's excited about this one, which has no relation to the old one. Nope, but, but it looks great. Yeah, so 
Okay. We don't really know much about it though. We can't. Yeah, we don't. They they haven't really announced much of them on that thing. And it, and honestly, like, can GM even build a mass production electric car uh, other than the Bolt, which they're canceling? Which yeah, it's they're going to bring it back, but. <laughs> Spicy Corvette section. All right, here's the same Silverado, Silverado RST that I filmed in uh, Michigan when I went to drive the work truck. Ah. So this made it in the video. Um, so I sat in there and did all the stuff in this one. And uh, what do you think? 24 inch wheels, by the yeah. way. Huge. 240 kilowatt hour battery pack, 365 kilowatt peak charging. Uh, just a freaking ripper. All the numbers, love it. Uh, the, the problem is they just can't build enough of them. They delayed series production by one year and it's just, too far away, in my opinion. Did you so. tell me the starting price? Oh, this one's well over a hundred grand for the RST. So uh, why might someone who's considering an electric truck go for this over the other option on the market right now? It's got twice the battery capacity. Big range, big towing, yeah. big charging. So they're gonna hopefully do well with this one? They'll sell every one they can make yeah, because they can't make that many. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we shouldn't make too much fun of them. Uh, this is kind of cool. This is the home energy thing from GM. So they actually have a uh, CCS connection here, which I can't undo at the moment because it's AC communication. And I think AC charging for the vehicle, but then DC out of the vehicle into the inverter, which then powers your home. That's a cool solution. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So basically um, the reason they do a CCS home connection, Ford does this too, is they don't want to spend the money for the onboard inverter on the vehicle mm -hmm. um, and also have to match like the frequency and the voltage and the draw of the house in the car, which I think Lucid is planning on doing AC bi-directional charging. The US brands are planning on doing DC bi-directional charging. And so you get these really tiny, low current cable CCS situations. Do we nice. know who's manufacturing this yet? <laughs> no. I wonder if they haven't announced that. Yeah, I see no labels on anything. So um, we do know that uh, for their mobile connector, their like uh, power V to L stuff, that's all CTEC is doing the internals on those. So maybe that's still up in the air. Yeah, I don't know who's doing all this. Maybe Tom would know. Tom's really uh, been connected with GM and all these home energy product stuff. Yeah, and then we have the, the next release, the Blazer EV. These are on sale today. You can go buy one. If Actually, you, Edmunds just bought one. They already took delivery. If you want to buy one. So it, it, now here we go. Um, this is the same to... car as the ZDX underneath. Ah. Obviously different chassis tuning, same as Lyric, different chassis tuning. I see they tried to hide the charge port. Would you like to demonstrate the charge port, Francie? <laughs> oh, oh, they truly did. Did they see what you did yesterday? I don't know. Maybe. Y'all well, were really touching it, so. <laughs> okay. So it, it doesn't open very nicely. But then hit close, and it is the world's slowest closing charge port in existence. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Here we go. We're almost there. It's kind of slow, huh? Yeah. It's a bit rain. Slow. You're afraid you're going to get <laughs> shot. There we go. I could have been halfway to the next charger before that, that thing ten, closed. Ten full seconds there. For ten, the yeah, we so. timed it. Nine, nine point eight was Something the like fastest that. we got the charge port to do it. Do you know how much they they, char they cost? No, not sure. That would be ah. one of the colleagues ah. here. The, see. the red, the gray jackets. Yeah. 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 So um, also, this is the RS model, so it's got the sporty bits. Francie, hop in, give us your review of the. Chevrolet Blazer EV sure. RS. It's got red stitching, so it must be fast. I just hate this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, That's terrible. No, uh, no, no. You don't like it? I don't like it at all, really. You don't no. like it at all? Well, no, I don't like the look of it off the bat. I don't like how this screen looks. This yeah, isn't that's me. definitely not OLED, you can tell. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, in terms of comparing it to what, this is also what's so fun about the LA Auto Show is that you're in and out of cars, all from different brands, which is fun. But yeah, I mean, uh, no, I'm not feeling it. This isn't my style. I don't think it looks very sleek and put together. It looks clunky. Uh, what about the Lyric interior? There's one downstairs we should show everyone. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, we were in that the other day. It's coming back to me, but I don't really remember. All right, we'll go downstairs and you can keep in mind what you just saw here. And the Lyric's supposed to be better. That's the Cadillac, that's the nice right. one. But in terms of pricing, this is only a few thousand dollars less than the Lyric. There's not that big of a price gap. Okay, well, no. Let me hop in there. I haven't Get sat in, in there, it. Kyle. Let me uh, check it out. First time sitting in the new Blazer. Oh, the seat about... material is awful. Yeah. It's this microfiber -y. I don't like that. It looks dusty. Okay. Well, yeah, our out of spec detailer sat in it, Colton, and he wanted out so fast. Okay, we're not here just to crap on the Blazer EV. There's got to be something good about this. I love the shifter. 
Okay, good. Really, because I like that. It's like a specter. You pull it towards you and then engage the gear. You can't just push it up or down. You have to release it from its lock position. Interesting. Love that. A heated steering wheel. No adaptive cruise or anything on this one. Maybe it does. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, the air vents look like they would actually work well with a lot of airflow, but wow, do they feel shitty. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a long week. <laughs> No Raw. sunroof in this thing, Jordan. Yeah. This is like a sixty something thousand dollar car. Right? Feels a bit base. Seems like Looks the like price it. is just the But hey, the rear windows do roll down. down all the way. So oh, that's something. This is nice. Of the this is a level? big display. Come look at this. So this whole thing is a display from this edge all the way around. So this must have the upgraded screen. Because normally they have a power button and then the screen starts here. Right. And my understanding, and then you have like a capacitive power button on this side. How about that? See more controls. Decent yeah. Display, decent UI. Oh, well, look at the oh, speed of that! Wow, nice. Okay. okay. The gaming factor, maybe. This is coming back. Where, where is all the uh, charging settings? All the stuff we would want to see. Uh, charging. Here we go. We have. Do, do, do fast charge. You can do manual preconditioning. It says just like an athlete, your battery needs a warm up to perform at its best. All right, let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> Steering wheel's too thick. I still have my phone. Say one thing nice that you like about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we just keep going that way through the rest of the Chevy booth. We're I'm not against done. it. I think it's going to drive nice. I think there's a lot of interest in this vehicle. I think the leasing is going to have to come into play. It's just this electric SUV segment is getting really ultra competitive. Definitely. And the Lyric isn't that much more money. So I'm just, I like the Lyric. Yeah. So I would just go Lyric. I, and the Lyric's not a performance car. Like it was really soft. Right. So maybe this will be tuned a little bit sportier. They also have the Bolt and the Bolt EUV on display here, which are two great electric vehicles at a fantastic price and get them before they go out of production. Yeah, they're hiding them in the back over here, which is kind of funny. As we're talking about, so oh yeah, as we're talking about electric cars, can I just show everyone my favorite diesel engine on the market? Yep. This is the Duramax um, uh, inline six cylinder diesel on this particular one. I, they put this thing in like Suburbans, Escalades, you can get the Duramax version. I don't want to go too crazy on this thing, but you get like 32 MPG on the highway of a Suburban. You get like almost a thousand mile range. Damn. It's incredible. And um, for like people who live in Wyoming with no yeah. charging and we need big vehicles, this is my new favorite That's engine. Cool. No range anxiety. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not good for the environment, but like, holy smokes, <laughs> this thing rocks. It's so good. Anyway, <laughs> what I'd love to see is this engine paired with a range extended EV. That would be interesting. In like a heavy duty truck. Yep. Okay, so Bolt, Bolt EUV, you were saying something about them. Not much. Okay. Not much. We love the Bolt. Yeah. Bolt, big Bolt fans. Good they don't, there's only one problem. They charge slow. Other than that, they're great. Mm -hmm. I mean, great city car. They're they're gonna phase them out. Do you think they're gonna phase them back in? Yep, with the Ultium stuff. Yep. Because I screamed at Mary's office. Oh. I don't, <laughs> I don't actually think it made any difference, but it was perfect timing that I I went all the way to Detroit. I made a video screaming at Mary's office saying, "Don't kill the Bolt." And then yeah. literally two days later, they, they said, "Oh, we messed bolt. up. We're not killing the Bolt." Uh, oh yeah, here's what we had on test. The new Colorado ZR2. This thing is mega. Looks good. This is what is the ultimate Colorado, literally. <laughs> <laughs> In Colorado. Yes. Yep. Um, love this truck. Super beefy, huge nice. tires. So sick. Big. I can't wait till we start, you know, seeing where, where battery range doesn't become top concern when designing a vehicle. And uh, they can do some long range, big boy, you know, sort of off-roady truck builds like that. Um, also, Jordan, if I can direct your attention over here, the new Z06 is on display. Yep, everyone loves a good Corvette. Bot plane crank, C8, big power, big aero. They also have an E-Ray. I don't think they have, oh yeah, the E-Ray's over there. There's not that many convertibles here. It's yeah, disappointing. Con convertibles seem out, almost. I feel like they're just gonna come right back in style, though. Look at that, how fun. Especially like EV life, I feel like convertibles would just go with that. Here's, you, here's the issue with these convertibles is the, the trunk's gone. Well, you can put two grocery bags in there. Two grocery bags. So, the grocery price is going up. <laughs> Buy a convertible. We've solved everyone's problem. <laughs> so you're preaching to the choir with Jordan, who is our resident convertible lover. Yeah. I also own an electric convertible, my Smart. I love that car. So yeah, open air, EV. 
It seems to go with it because although Jordan does road trip his convertible a lot and you can do whatever with a convertible ride that you can with uh, not everything, but it seems more like an EV friendly option because maybe you don't need the biggest range. You yep. just need a car to get you around, have fun with, Sorry. maybe like go up on a day Someday trip we'll get over this range thing and I can just have my 150 mile range convertible and be happy. That's we, yeah. the perfect range. 150 miles usable in a convertible in the canyons. All I need. Well, yeah, that's I about need. the range we got out of our M3 this week. You yeah. know <laughs> we started with EVs in the beginning or kept with them with electric cars. I don't think range would even be a topic of conversation. Yeah, the reason range is a problem is because infrastructure is a problem. Yep. Uh, E-Ray, just before. over one kilowatt hour battery pack in this thing. It's a hybrid, non-plug-in, but you can do like a silent start an inch away from your neighborhood. Oh, that's and then great. you have an electric motor powering the front axle. Huh. So it's a four-wheel drive, mid-engined Corvette. So cool. So I have, have to drive to one. silently wheel it out of your parents' house before you start it up and right. take it out at night. And Jordan, I think both you and I were disappointed with the standard C8. Yep. Why, Jordan? Um, it just, I don't know. I, I just wasn't that inspired by it. Like, like it's, soft it's a fine like, car. It's a good Grand Tour. Like taking it across the country would be comfortable but I don't love it. Okay. I, I think styling wise, actually the C7 is more interesting to me. Well, as we're continuing, I think that's a full tour of everything here. We're gonna go downstairs because we totally skipped Cadillac, who has a lane display. The churro? The what? What was the lane display? The, <laughs> the Cadillac. I saw a churro. Oh, that's right, yeah. Oh, the Cadillac. Well, yeah, it's not even officially by Cadillac. Oh, really? It's by the media representation. Which is Cadillac. Yes, but like, it's not a big old, it's out in the hall. It's out in the front hall with barely any branding, I oh, think. are they even here today then? Go we'll see. Maybe we skipped them because they weren't there. We, we have to go look. We glossed no, over the electrified oh. G80. This is a car I have not yet reviewed. And I have been, it's been on my mind. I need to just review them. You, you just go to Hertz and rent one or Enterprise. It's I think so that. good. Show everyone the car, Jordan. It's gorgeous. I mean, it's G80 that we all know and love. It's just electrified now. And by electrified means fully electric. Fully electric. It's confusing. <laughs> I don't know the full specs on it, but it should charge pretty well. Yep. It's nice. I don't There's know. a lot of rental cars. I don't think I've seen a privately owned one. I would like an Ultra G90. Pretty good Now range, we're talking. Right? That would be, Because oh, G90 thing. is epic. Mm -hmm. Our friend Kevin Williams, wow. who writes for Inside EVs, has one on test yep. this week. I was going to say, that's that's a better car to have on test than an M3, I think, in our situation. Well, except for the Canyons. Maybe we'll get both next year. Well, I, I've never driven a G90, actually. I know Forrest has done he some loves stuff it. with it. Yeah. yeah, he's a huge fan. Um, okay, so, so there's I, the Lexus, Toyota, Nissan. I think we got everything in here. We're, we're really missing the a German. Pajamas. Yeah, we didn't show the pajamas. Uh, but we're really missing the German brands. Yes. I mean, uh, they just have really no interest in being here. I think it's time at the end of the video, uh, while we're heading to the Lyric, can we just discuss the purpose of an auto show? Yeah. I think it's decreasing, especially with digital media, with pop-up interactions that brands are doing with a new way of marketing. Definitely. There's a lot of people here today, but you know, the point of an auto show is you have to have some ROI to justify the millions of dollars of cost it is to show up here as an automaker. Right. And I would say, unless you have a huge unveil with a hot product, not worth it. I well, would agree. I, I will say a lot of people are touching and getting in every single car, which is good. Because if you're car shopping, there's two things you're looking for, and it's how do you feel inside the car, yes. but also how does the car drive. Right. Here, mostly you can't tell how the car drives. Now, they do have some riding things happening outside. Tesla has a huge presence. Tesla has a huge presence here. They don't even have a booth, actually. It's only ride-alongs, yes. or actually driving. I kind of get that, right? I mean, like, if you're considering an EV, you might be considering Tesla or other, yeah. right? But then if it's like, BMW or Mercedes, if you're going for those more luxury brands, then I feel like it does make sense. Okay, I'm gonna go to that dealership because I'm interested in BMW or Mercedes. I yep. don't know, what do you think? Well, I will say if you're car shopping, here's a good place to try a bunch of different cars mm -hmm. and just sit in them. And then like you can at least rule some out. Like if you get in a car and you're like, ah, this feels terrible. This Blazer EV feels like crap. Right. Uh, rule that out and then go try to drive the ones later at dealerships. Cause this is an easier place to try everything all in one spot. You're not like scheduling with different dealerships. It's true. But you can't drive everything. They no. are here. Okay, they're just hidden. Let's yes. cut behind the Elantra race car, Jordan. Ah. 
I was wearing one of those outfits the other week. <laughs> Francie, what's your favorite car of the show while we're walking through? Ah, my favorite car of the show. I don't know. I don't have a favorite. I'm so bad at favorites. Let's sit in the Cadillac. First. What's when I think sure. when I say you have to think of one car from the LA Auto Show? Doesn't have to be your favorite. What's the first car to come to mind? Gravity. Gravity. Obviously. So Lucid Gravity is the star of the show. Of no course. question. I think Pretty that's much. for me. My favorite car here is that the Ionic 5N. Should we talk about it again, Kyle? No. What uh, Jordan? What's your favorite? Uh, it's like the car I would leave here in. Oh, probably the Pagani Wire in the front. <laughs> <laughs> but a realistic. The one. main, the main real ones. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I the LC 500. <laughs> yeah, I we love. Keep, LC I know they're, they're, they've been at every show for like years, but I just that V8. It grabs me, and I've driven. I've I've only driven on track. I've never driven on the street. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hop in the Lyric while it's empty. While you're doing that, can I show everyone the charge port for the 49th millionth time? Watch the tuning. Boing. <laughs> I think it's gotten worse. Um, yeah, not this good. one closes that, much faster. Very different. Yeah, than the Eve, than the Blazer. But let's get Francie's interior review. Your thoughts, ma'am? Well, I mean, if we're just immediately comparing it to the Blazer, extremely different. I think that this looks way better. Um, I don't know if it's the coloring or just the sh like the actual appearance of everything. It seems it's more streamlined. I think in the blazer. It I'm made... just looking at material usage, like the the materials used on all the dashboards and the screen quality, and wow, everything is so much nicer. So much this nicer. One. I think the presentation is just better thought out, in my opinion. So, I mean, if good. You're, yeah, if you're really considering this price range. Spend the extra five grand and get a Lyric. Of course. And you I don't know two what... years of free charging on the EVgo network. Wow. I mean, if that matters they just to you. look they just look better, I think, in, in every way. Every time I see a Lyric on the road, I'm like intrigued. So when I reviewed the Lyric, I think everyone's impression was that I didn't like it. Because I pointed out a lot of problems with yeah. how it drove in the canyons and things like that. But that couldn't be farther from the truth. And I really looking back on the video i didn't do the job i wanted to do i wanted to show like i love the lyric i had a lyric in new york uh as a ta like a limo car i was going to an event and i got picked up in a lyric and it was perfect except the guy drove a bit like max where it was throttle brake throttle brake it was oh, i got, was getting car sick in the back worse. of that thing but other than that it was like out of spec dave and take over yeah my dad once took over driving for an uber because he was so disappointed with his driving <laughs> What's this? Where are you taking us? This is another unveil, I think, this this year at the auto show. It's the Verge, which is an electric motorcycle. It's supposedly like the electric superbike. Right. Zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds. But that's 6.6 6 seconds slower than my Model S. Yes, but, but it's okay it's, it's on one in wheel. Versus not in a car. It's one I wheel know. drive versus just, four wheel drive. I was drive. just being devil's advocate. <laughs> no, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but the, the motor's really cool in the rear, as you can see. Like, you can see through it. It's, it's that style. Yeah, that's whatever that's cool. called. I think that looks like, you know, what you would see in that, you know, dystopian future societies. Um, and yeah, very, is it stuff. safe to have the high voltage cabling exposed like that? I don't know. It's a good question. But it's 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 supposedly the electric super bike. Um, Compared I don't to know. the others? Well, yeah. It's it's better on paper in every single way. But have also they made one? Probably the cost. I don't know if they made them. <laughs> Should we ask? It's just a prototype. So they're just on paper, maybe. So we asked someone here at Verge um, about, you know, actual Verge motorcycles on the roads. They have them in Europe. They couldn't give us the exact numbers, but, uh, you know, a lot was the official response. Yeah, a lot. And then in the U.S. <laughs> spring or, of next year. Uh, that's when that's when test rides start. So test rides some uh, production sometime. So I'm intrigued. Yeah. But we don't have a price really no don't have a price don't have many details but yeah i'm sure they're figuring it out i mean getting apparently they have people driving them on the roads in europe so and then outside was the nicola semi truck which we tested we have a whole video on that we i don't know where it is right now if it's even here maybe it's just media day but yeah that's the other thing but that's pretty much it that's the la auto show of 2023 did you see the armored tesla nope Good. There is one. There's somewhere. I'll insert a clip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then right over here, right before we left, we wanted to point out this armored Tesla, which grabs attention, everyone's attention, I'm sure. And this is Cameron with Alpine Armoring. Is that the company? Alpine Armoring, yes. My yeah. name is Cam Karushi, Director of Design and Engineering for Alpine Armoring. Behind me here is our Tesla Model S, fully armored to level A9, what is the Tesla? which stops uh, up to 308 rounds or 762 by 51. Uh, 
We have shot at the vehicle several times here, ranging from 9mm all the way up to, like I said, 308 rounds. Um, we've done a full 360 armored protection, which is included in our level A9, uh, as well as two DM-51 hand grenade protect protection as well. Uh, we have done a full inconspicuous design of this Tesla Model S, and uh, we pride ourselves on that type of design to keep uh, our clients feeling in a low-profile manner. So we don't want to attract unnecessary attention to the vehicle, and we want to make, take, maintain the OEM look of the vehicle. Uh, one of the reasons we ch chose the Tesla Model S is it's the uh, staple of the electric vehicle, and uh, we wanted to build the, one of the most certified high-level armored uh, electric vehicles in the market, which we currently do now. This specific vehicle happened to be our founder's and CEO's vehicle. Um, it currently has 80,000 miles and was in service over 10 years. And after usage, we decided to do a full testing and see how it could do uh, after live fire after 10 years of service. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw the pre facelift nose cone Tesla, so I knew it was yeah, kind of an older exactly. one. And you're right, it is very inconspicuous. We walked exactly. by this last night, it was sitting outside, and we right. didn't think anything of it until we like walked around. We were like, is that a bullet hole? Wait, is that a million bullet holes? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you did a good yeah. job at making it a bit subtle. Right. Um, I'm curious, is the underside armored at all as well? Yeah, so the underside is armored as well. Uh, it's, it's protected against two DM 51 hand grenades as well. We are still undergoing an R&D research. So as you can see, this vehicle was an R&D testing vehicle for us. And one of the reasons is to explore the explosive properties with EV batteries. Uh, it's pretty well understood in the industry how to do uh, protection for ICE vehicles, AKA internal combustion engine. So protecting the vehicle against uh, Sharpnel, against fuel tanks and so forth is pretty easy to do. But now that we're entering into the EV era, we're trying to figure out how exactly to protect the uh, EV batteries against uh, explosive properties. And so that's where this EV testing comes in, which is still ongoing. That's really awesome. Are you testing any others outside of Tesla for now, or is this kind of your yeah. first one? So we also have our Ford uh, F-150 Lightning, which is at our second booth as well. Awesome. Um, that has been fully armored and is the only uh, F-150 Lightning that's armored in the world currently. Uh, that is armored to the same level, A9. Uh, it's, it's not shut up, it's actually brand new and for sale, uh, along with the several other vehicles we have in stock. That's so cool. Yeah, this is really cool and really, I think this is an important niche for this, of course, and that's probably your clientele. Yeah, it's becoming less and less niche, actually. So in the last few years, especially since 2017, 2018, the U.S. market has exploded for us, really? especially in California. Yeah. L.A., San Francisco are big markets for us as well. Um, people buy this for peace of mind and uh, general protection. Uh, it also serves as anti-break-in protection as well. So if you want to protect your belongings on the inside and so forth, which is a huge problem in the state of California. Uh, it's a secondary purpose for that as well. Um, and it's really a like, nice insurance for people to kind of have in the garage and, you know, for that one day that comes in the future, it's nice to have that to throw the wife and kids in the car and make it out safely. So most of our clientele buy that for the peace of mind. That's really awesome. Are you able to talk at all about what, the, what it costs to make this happen or is it extremely case by case basis? Yeah, it's very case by case. The options vary widely on these type of uh, vehicles, um, especially when it comes to the, the type of weapon you want to stop, the type of options you want, the vehicle, the base price of the vehicle, it varies widely. But if in an overall scope of the entire industry, we, our vehicles range anywhere from 100,000 to upwards of 700,000. So yeah. the range can go completely wide uh, and vehicles will just fall within some of that category right there. Gotcha. What kind of weight does this add to an electric car? Yeah, so depending on your, how you spec it out, with the A9 package we've done, we've done a specialized lightweight A9 package on this, okay. which added roughly 1,300 pounds or 1,300 pounds to the overall vehicle, uh, which is, is not too bad, actually, considering it's a assault rifle protected vehicle. Yeah, do you do any modifications to the suspension and stuff like that? Yeah, so all vehicles, uh, nearly all vehicles, roughly 90, 95% of our vehicles are all uh, fully customized suspension, and we've done heavy duty coil systems, sway bars, and uh, shock systems to assist the weight of the armor of the vehicle. We also do uh, added uh, brake systems as well. Oh, so nice. all of our braking systems have increased heat dissipation to allow for repeated brake, uh, heavy braking uh, to prevent uh, premature brake fade. So uh, those are the little things that Alpine does that goes ahead of the armoring. We go into vehicle dynamics, braking, longevity, and just making the vehicle daily drive as comfortable as possible. That's awesome. Yeah, it sounds like you're covering all the bases. Exactly. Well, it's a really cool company. Thanks for telling me everything you guys do and uh, looking forward yeah. to seeing more vehicles armored like this, especially what well, we might not even notice until uh, you guys tell us. But Right, exactly. Uh, that's really exactly. cool. So alpineco.com. Thank you. <laughs> Check us out. Uh, okay, in summary, show's pretty small this year. 
pretty low key. Uh, media day was really low key. Holy smokes, no one was here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, a couple of press conferences, I saw a bunch of people, but it just didn't have the vibe of old school auto shows. And uh, I think that's fine. Auto shows change, the industry evolves and moves, especially as digitalization comes into uh, the new car reviewing world. Uh, I think there's maybe less of a need from a content creation standpoint. I'm just trying to think from our side, we've pretty much driven everything in here and made full videos of everything we need to. Um, you know, of course, there's a few outliers, a few different cars that we have to do walk arounds. It's worth coming. Um, but it's definitely seems like less of a value than it used to be. Um, yeah, so epic, epic time, of course, getting to see viewers, getting to see people in the industry and friends of ours. And uh, for all, everyone who tried to say hey during this video while we were shooting, sorry that we couldn't. Uh, but uh, yeah, cool beans. You want to finish this off here? Yeah. Uh, but how? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if that was a prompt for something. Yeah, I mean, the auto show has gotten smaller, like you said. It's cool to come and see people, but yeah i think that there's not as big of a draw but if you're car shopping great opportunity to come and touch everything i think that's the biggest perk if you're car shopping come see all the cars because yeah. there's a lot of things that aren't new here they're just existing models yeah so go try them all if you're bored if you're bored in la, in LA <laughs> come on over just put them in the front of a car <laughs> so yeah thanks for watching thanks for watching thanks for you got like, the video subscribe. <laughs> like, thanks for watching everyone we'll see you next time on the out of spec channel bye Oh, <laughs> oh,